you make a copy? Sage, what's up? Delay stream for three hours, please. I'm a working man. Well, I happen to have time at the second, so I thought I would just uh, throw it up. Maybe it's not the best time, but we're here. But thank you so much for the uh, the three month restub. Welcome back to the subscribers. Enjoy continued access to our sweet custom Death Shadow emotes. Um, I just needed to update this deck list real quick. Just updating this real quick and then I'm getting back to Soul Type Shadow. I just had this on my mind. I was literally about to start pestering you to start streaming. Oh, that's that's fair. Smurabido with a 24 month free subscription chain. Two years. Good lord. Man, welcome back to the subscribers. I'll hit you with our uh, our custom Death Shadow emotes anyway. Even though I feel like you've probably used more of them than anybody else in the chat. And it's like not even close. <laughs> 62% of the way to a level one hype train. Man. Just out here trying to play some bad shadow. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be playing some Soul Tie Shadow. I got the list uh, ready to go. I just wanted to update this real quick because I was thinking about it. Um, I just got back from Atlanta at like nine hours ago <laughs> so i got like uh, a little bit of sleep i played one event the entire time i uh, didn't play in any of the lcqs didn't play anything on saturday i just played in the pioneer 5k on sunday uh ran through with grixis uh arc light phoenix uh so there's some like Phoenix boys in there and stuff. And y'all can't tell what any of these cards are. Man, that camera quality is bad, but like Picklock fairies and ledger shredders and blah, 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 blah. Uh, ran through Grixis Arclight. It was really, really fun. I have to admit, uh, I am going to be like trying to put together some more Pioneer videos. I had a much better time playing it than I thought I would. Now, just so you know, we're not going to cut back on the modern content and replace it with Pioneer. I'm going to do Pioneer's videos in addition to the modern content. And I wanted to see, like, how easily uh, the Demir... It's basically Demir. It's like Red just for Arclight Phoenix. But how easily that deck could be ported over to Timeless... Well, obviously, with some amount of adjustments here and there, but I just wanted to see like what it would look like, what changed, what didn't change. And so I was just doing that real quick because the deck was a blast. Like I played against. Um, uh, what did I play against? Rakdos mid range beat that beat Boros Convoke beat. Um, Oh, uh, what else did I beat? Creativity beat Lotus Field. Like, lost a blue-white control. That felt kind of rough, but I also think I just had, like, no, no interaction whatsoever. Parker, what's up? Running on three hours of sleep? Yeah, I got, like, four. <laughs> so, but you slept in the car. For anybody that doesn't know... Uh, on the drive back, our drivers started, like, swerving after, like, 30 minutes. I'm like, I'm going to take over and drive. So I drove the last five and a half hours. 
while everybody else slept. <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm feeling a little jaded, but... Uh, but some of the issues I was running into in the event was like not having spell pierce in some number. The list I was running was like a single negate and a single mystical dispute in the sideboard. Um, and it felt pretty bad. So I did want to address that. Kaito was an absolute all star. I can even craft another Kaito because Lord knows I got plenty of mythic wild cards like five. Uh, but getting. Sorry, I put my time. Oh, I'm not mad at you. Don't worry. <laughs> it's the other inconsiderate douche in the car. <laughs> no, nah. I know. I don't, have never actually been in a car with Carlos driving, so I'm a little. I don't know if it would be good or bad or what, and I'm not saying I don't want to risk it, but yeah, you get the idea. Uh, Takenuma. Shield Red. I don't care about my companion enabling. Did I not spell Shieldred correctly? Oh, because it's only pulling lands. Uh, Shieldred. Shieldred was OP. Like, Shieldred's nuts. That card's stupid. You Shieldred into a treasure cruise and half your opponents just go, Yeah, yep. Nothing I can do about that. Probably get rid of... Light, like some number of ops because you have considers and brainstorms and stuff. And that pick lock, Faye. This dude, this dude's legit. He puts in some work. Obviously, there will be some number of changes to this as it goes along, but I wanted to see, like, I watery glaive. I wanted to see if you could like port the yeah <laughs> the majority of the deck over. Why can I not type? Or uh, dark slick shore. I also did not like dark slick shores. There's not really better options. There's probably no. It's probably fine in like explorer like this. Because you can just run uh, the fetches and shocks and stuff. But the amount of times that I had like Dark Slick Shores come into play tapped late when I needed an untapped mana was insane. Like 4, 8, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17. I can get a basic swamp. Probably just run 18 lands because I've got... Um, What's it called? Brainstorm and so something kind of close to that. We'll figure it out as we're going. Uh, but I'm gonna play, like I said, Sultai Shadow today. It's basically to be your splashing for Oko, but it's a list I've been kind of messing around with that I felt really good with. Um. Obviously, it's not perfect, like Scourge of the Skyclaves, I don't really like, but I don't have a, a great replacement for it, unless I just want to throw another cantrip in that spot. Bowmaster, great. Shredder's okay. You get Shredder Bobble, so like it's a little bit better, but it's still not some, uh, some insane threat in this deck. Maybe I just want to cut the Scourge for like the third Shredder. Regardless of what you do, like as long as Oak goes in your deck, you're kind of golden. Sideboard. Uh, camera's a little in the way, but it'll be gone once the video actually starts. So the top four are two copies of Spell Pierce, two copies of Stern Scolding, and then it drops down to like Pithing Needle, Legion's In, Noxious Grasp, blah, 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 Bitter Blossom. And yeah, we're just going to jump in and jam. See what happens. 
So traditional timeless, best of three. We need to find find ranked timeless ranked best of three. Oko, go. Now we're on. Uh, throw the background up. I don't know. I'll have to see if, um, I guess I can always like shrink. Ah, uh, that looks weird. Not really a good way to fit the frame. We'll see what it looks like. I might go back to the other overlay. If it looks like we're missing out too much on this right side. Can we see chat okay? Uh, this opening hand's pretty good. We're on the draw. Thought sees into potential drown. Got counter spell, so we'll roll with it. See if we can find like a, uh, a payoff of some sort. Yeah, go crazy. I assume take either the drown or the counter spell just to take something a little bit different. Yup. Let's thought seize you. Oh, baby. So. Dread Horde Arcanist would be the biggest issue if I don't find an answer. I'll have to, like, take a hit off the Ragavan, let him play the Channeler. This might be okay, though. Like, they dash Ragavan, hit us for two... Most of our deck... Oh, they're not going to dash Ragavan. Common. Okay. That's the case. We'll take the Channeler. And I might brainstorm to put something dead on top for Ragavan. like make sure they don't hit anything live because I really don't want them to hit like an Oko and be able to cast it. So yeah, I could put like I could put counter spell on top because I don't really care about counter spell at this point. Uh, I could put stubborn denial on top though next turn I will be able to like fetch Play the shadow, hold up stubs. I don't really like that. So I think I'm going to put the counter spell on top. Let them rag into that. Oh my god, counter spell. That's such a good hit for you. Okay. What are we doing? I like Fatal pushing the Shaman. So I'm probably just going like, fetch up a Watery Grave, Fatal push the Shaman, play the Shadow, hold up Stub. That sounds pretty reasonable. Fetch up Watery Grave, Fatal push the Shaman. Not gonna lie, this gameplay looks sick, right? Like, brainstorming into Ragavan hits. And the part I really love about this so far is nothing has felt just like, oh my god, broken. And so much of that, I think it's because everybody just plays a bunch of broken cards. 
everybody just plays a bunch of broken cards. <laughs> so I'm just like Mystic Sanctuary back brainstorm. This is also why all my lands in the deck. I think I've got a basic swamp, but all the lands in the deck are islands. So you can just run Mystic Sanctuary to get back something good. So I do think I'm going to put Brainstorm back on top. Draw into that. Maybe shuffle away this Thought Seize. Um, I could attack. But I don't want them to have Brainstorm. Like I don't want to have to force Stub on the Brainstorm. So I think I'm just going to pass. Does Stream Decker allow you to add Arena decks? Or, uh, like, Timeless decks. I honestly have not checked that. Oh my god, it's Brainstorm. Okay. So the thing that would blow me out would be Bowmaster. So I'm going to start with Thoughtseize. Check for Bowmaster. If they, like, respond with one, I could respond with Brainstorm. Dub a fatal push. They've just got a handful of ragavans. Okay. Cast a brainstorm. There's an Oko and another brainstorm. I do want the Oko. I need the fetch land to get breeding pool. So. I think what I'm going to do is keep Oko in hand, put Brainstorm back and Polluted Delta on top of that. Alternatively, I could just go like Oko to hand. No, putting those back. And I'm going to put Polluted Delta on top. So if they do find an answer to the Shadow then the best thing they're getting is Breeding Pool. Which isn't like the worst thing in the world. Ugh. They've got Fatal Push. Uh, if I Fetch Shock, go to one and Elk the Arcanist. Then I die, so I've got to fetch shock, go to one, Oko, make a food. They're going to Arcanist, push the shadow, get in for three. I crack the food, go back up to four. And I just kind of have to hope that I get something decent off the top. Like, Elking the Arcanist doesn't do anything, because then they just attack him with both and I die. So yeah, make a food. No attacks. Or maybe I was supposed to attack there, because, like, they're going to kill the Shadow regardless, so not attacking doesn't really do anything. But yeah, should have attacked. Should have attacked. They're going to attack everything at me. Yep. We'll go ahead and sack our food. Gain some life. Ragavan hits a Mishra's Bobble. Okay. Pretty good. So let's make a food. They've got a thought seize with the Arcanist, so I don't really care about that. Uh, so I'm just going to pass back. 
plan to fatal push the Ragavan inside of combat, and hopefully they just like recast the thought seize. Now we're pushing the Arcanist. Like, pushing the Ragavan doesn't make a lot of sense when they can just dash the second one. Got a Thought Seize. I really don't like on Arena how you can see, like, what your opponent's looking at at any given time. Like, can see that, oh, they're checking out my Oko, or they're checking out their graveyard, or they're hovering over food, or whatever. Because uh, I know there's a lot of times that you can use that to, like, misdirect what your opponent's doing, but there's also a lot of times that it just, like, gives stuff away. Like, you draw a Snapcaster and immediately go to look at your graveyard, and you're like, ah, I wonder what he drew. All right, let's keep up the food. Pass the turn. Oh, master. Mm. So I would go to one. Kill the Ragavan. Pop the food. First, take another Oko hit. Ah. I think I'm going to counter this because some of my best top decks right now are like Brainstorm or Treasure Cruise. Priority giving away answers to the worst aspect. Yeah. That too, like the automatic passing, just saying, oh, you've got something, or oh, you don't have something. Pretty bad. Sack my food. Ragavan hits a push. Awesome. And it's got so much mana. Nothing to do with it. <laughs> All right, let's top deck like a treasure cruise. Cruise would be absolute S tier here. That's also really good. So we'll make a food, pass the turn. Inquisition, let's Bowmaster, ping down the Ragavan. Inquisition resolves. And I'll probably just... Uh, I'm really tempted to just like make this food into an elk, but I have to assume my opponent's playing Lightning Bolt. And I really don't want to be at three life against the potential Bolt deck. Let's see what you got coming off the top. I mean, I got Bowmaster, so that's not the worst thing in the world. Okay, um... If I amass... Or if I turn the amass token into an elk... Uh, sure. Oko! <laughs> Oko Broko! If I turn the amass token into an elk... And they play a Spyro, I make a new amass token, right? Because... A mass is put the 1-1 one, one counter on a dude you've got.
Roll one counter on an army you control. It's also an orc. If you don't control an army. And it's like creature type. Orc army. Yeah. Token creature orc army. Target artifact or creatures loses all ability and becomes a green elk creature. Not in addition to its other types. Just becomes a green elk. Yeah, the token will be a 4-4, four, four, right. It'll be a 3-3 three, three elk with a 1-1 one, one counter. It keeps that. I'm just wondering if it would make a new army token. And based off what I'm reading, I believe it should. So that would be pretty cool to just be able to like make elk an army token and then make a new army token. And yeah. So we're going to bring in Stern Scoldings because they just got small creatures dot deck. Legion's End. Bringing in the extra Drown in the Lock. I uh, don't really want Bitter Blossom against the Bolt deck. Everything else is pretty meh. Just poured out some Thought Seizes. Call it a day. Say we've got Oko. Congratulations, we broke Bowmaster and Oko. Yeah, we did it. We were the ones that broke Oko. <laughs> Everybody else, like, out there winning major events with Oko. Uh-uh. Us. Us. These people. Opponent, don't you disrespect the Shadow Heart and take anything else. If you don't take Shadow Heart, you will lose to this Shadow Heart. Okay. Opponent clearly disrespecting Shadow Heart. Mark my words. I said it. I said if Oko or if opponent did not take the Shadow Heart, they will lose to the Shadow Heart. Go ahead and get that out of the way. And I kind of want to flash in Bowmaster and block. Definitely now. Booty and the Mandrills. The hottest band you've never heard of. I think I am going to make them have like another. Another relevant thing. All right. So. They target. They target the Inquisition. But they still have to cast it, right? Yeah, so I can let this resolve, make them cast the Inquisition, and then I can respond to the Inquisition. Oh, sure. All right. They decide to take the uh, the shadow heart. Not blocking. And go. Going to be a little bit rough with a push and a duress in the yard. All right, let's counter this because they're going to get to flash one back regardless. So I might as well like make them do that. How many hand disruption spells is this? Uh, triple Inquisition, double duress. Uh, 
S. All right. The swing in, see what happens. Maybe they have a bowmaster or something. I'll at least get to know about it ahead of time. Not that I'm not casting this anyway. Graveyard doesn't really matter. That's pretty all right. Rip Dread Horde, rip Tugboat. <laughs> Just rip everything. Be a shame if you fired up that hive of the eye tyrant. Bro. We gotta talk about this. Eh. <laughs> I know I'm putting back Oko on top. I don't really care about the shadows. So maybe I just want to put like Oko push on top. And let them decide between these two. Yeah. You, my friend, have got a counter spell. Here's an Oko. Oko is going to make a food. The shadows say go. Let me kill it. You got it. You have absolutely got it. Be hiving. Mm-hmm. Exiled. Can't get it back. It's gone. Uh, I'm going to make this into a 3-3. Three, three. I, uh, Go. Either you draw a land and I get to push, or you draw something else and yeah, I get to push. Oko Broco. Ah, man. And people wonder why this card was banned. Because it's stupid. <laughs> Because you've got Oko and like 56 to 58 other cards that aren't Oko and that's all that matters. Is this like switching me to... What's the difference between traditional and... Like, is this not ranked when it says traditional his timeless or whatever? So do I have to keep going back to ranked every time? Oko okay, plus once upon a time was wild times, and it can be wild time again once more for a second time if you really want it to. Oko making foods and Nambo with shadow <laughs> seems underpowered. Truth. Cut the Okos. Pretty crap card, if we're honest. Yeah. Traditional is like 15 card sideboard, but it's still ranked. Luris of the Dream Den. You choose after you select. Okay. I'm not going to lie, these card sleeves, like, cause me some anxiety, and it's virtual, so obviously that makes perfect sense, but I look at these, and I'm just like, ah. <laughs> the 
shows you rank next to your name in a game like this, and it's ranked. Yeah, I get it once you're in the game, but like I want to make sure I'm getting into a ranked game before I start it instead of just like a regular game and having to back out and like rejoin and ranked. All right. Let's bobble and see what you got going on. Bloodstained Mire. So, Ragavan is first thought. Shadow Mirror. They kept a no lander in the Shadow Mirror and they're top decking the land. Ah. Uh, bruh. Bruh. Kept a no lander and got rewarded. Okay. Regroup. If I wasn't playing Oko, Luris would be the the absolute go-to. I've kind of messed around with a couple lists running Gigantha and uh like Fable and stuff. Mostly Jun, kind of like we do in Modern, but Loris. Loris pretty solid. Loris is a solid gentleman. An old cat thing. We'll have artifact, land, creature, if they're not shuffling, I'm assuming it's a land on top. We're going to risk uh, brainstorm locking ourselves. not really the worst thing in the world when things are going this slow. It's like, if their next relevant play is Shadow and we've got Fatal Push, then that's pretty okay. Confirmed Brainstorm Lock. Yeah, it happens. From time to time. Don't really learn anything with Shadow Heart. Are we brainstorming? Storming them brains? Little GDS. I saw that Grix's Shadow is like really, really popular in this format, which is super cool. Yep. It would be absolutely hilarious if we're both brainstorm locked. But with them having the double bobble, I'm going to assume that they're not. Really good chance they just kept a second land with one of those. Yep. Got a little thought seize action. Mm-hmm. This format's insane. I've been playing Soul Tide Natural Order into a Traxa and Necropotence with Ivory Tower. <laughs> Those both sound so sick. Like 
I've been messing around with every variant of Shadow I could come across. So I've been really liking Demir with the Oko Splash. Um, part of the reason being that I do not have the wild cards for um, uh, Lightning Bolt. So I've been kind of uh, second guessing that. Like, I don't really want to spend rare wild cards on Lightning Bolt, but I'm going to have to at some point. So, we'll just, like, play some Soul Tie or something until we get those, because unfortunately that means Jund is worse, and uh, Rixus is worse. Rakdos is worse. Got a Shadow. Uh, nope. Plan on Luris. All right, we gotta get this counter spell out of hand eventually. Mm-hmm. Got a channeler. We're still like very much in this if we find a second land. Ragaban, you son of a bitch. Okay. So now let's think. They are going to have Luris plus something next turn so i could go shredder to try to prepare for that i could hold up bowmaster i could fatal push while they're tapped out but then they just get to Yeah, I think I'm going to have to wait and try to go for, like, kill the Luris. Best case scenario would be they start with, like, Dash or Ragavan and don't do anything. Like, maybe Dash or Ragavan, I Bowmaster, they play a fourth land, Luris, Bobble, pass, and I get to, like, Bowmaster, shoot the Luris, draw. Something like that would just be absolute best case scenario, but I feel the odds are fairly against us. But if possible, I would really like to use a two drop this turn so I can potentially like untap, find a land, shredder plus push, ditch an extra Oko. You have got a Luris. Got a channeler. They're just going to go for the. You have a stub or a pierce. No. So they're just going to go for the potential flying kill. All right. So I could Oko and Elk something. I could Oko make a food. And Oko dies to the channelers. I don't have a one drop to Shredder plus something, which would have been great right here. Or I guess Oko make a food. I'm dead to, or an elk. I'm dead to the dashed Ragavan.
I think I just have to pass with Bowmaster and hope I can draw like a one mana removal spell next turn to Shredder plus spell. Kill one of these. Or we've got the Lightning Bolt. Never mind. On to game two. That's okay. I'm going to assume they're on something like Expressive Iteration. Maybe Mystical Dispute's a little... A little overly anxious. Am I real? Hope so. If I'm not, that's news to me. My whole life is a lie. Hmm. Put <laughs> on thought seizes. I don't want to trim on counter spell. Something like that. That you that destroyed me the other day sacked a shaman into an Atraxa, sucking my will to live at the same time. Ooh, hot. Sneep it. Sneep it off. Hands great. And it's got interaction, it's got Oko, like, what more do you want? Go. Gonna do Thought Seize Me? Twelve land Delver eight and one snap. That's pretty good. Uh, how do you function with only twelve lands? It seems like you'd have so many just one landers that never find a second. Lorian revealed Seagate. Gotcha. So like. 12 land. I got you. We're on the same page now. We are on the same page. I'm going to let this resolve. I'm going to plan on uh, fatal pushing this. Yep, go for it. Croaksa into the yard, you say. Ooh. Uh, I slightly regret letting this resolve now. But I really wanted to save Stern Scolding for like a Bowmaster or something. Or. Drawing into shattered. All of the draws. Okay. Third land is good because now we can for sure Oko next turn. I'll just play out the one they know about. Say go. Uh, we've also got turn four potential Mystic Sanctuary to put back like Fatal Push or Stern Scolding. Oh. 
Horses of Will and Days aren't legal, right? They are not. But Stifle is. I really, really, really want to get the wild cards to play Stifle. I think that would be so fun. Um. I'm going to try to, like, bait a Bowmaster. Do I want to jam the Oko? Mystical Dispute punishes me. Drown in the Lock would be pretty good. I think I'm just going to pass... Try to like stern scolding a uh, a bowmaster. That opponent clearly does not have Al. All right. What you got? Bolt, a shadow. They're going to have to find something to deal with this Kroxa. Well, I guess they'll have enough cards in the yard for me to drown the Kroxa. Because they've got five along with it now, so that's enough to escape. Six, seven gives two more to be able to drown. Mm. And like I want to jam the Oko, but if my opponent just goes for like jamming their Kroxa into my drown and I get to untap and like guarantee resolve my Oko, that sounds pretty beastly. Uh so maybe we get something like they play Kroxa, we drown Mystic Sanctuary back. Drown or push or something. Uh, sh sure, that's fine. This also kind of incentivizes them to to tap out here. If they find a land, they find a land. But if they don't find a land and they like play out a spell then that incentivizes them to, like, play out with their mana, and I get to resolve Oko, and that works fine for me. Right, so let's Stern Scolding this. Now, I don't think I want to put anything back yet, so I'll just wait. Slam Oko. Make a food. Save. Don't really need to play out Shadow into a known Lightning Bolt. If they escape Kroxa here, I can just untap and like drown it, ditch a Shadow or something. Because who cares about a Shadow when I've got an Oko? <laughs> or we could ditch a Drown and Mystic Sanctuary it back. You just Mystic Sanctuary back and push. But it looks like opponent does not have... Ooh. The old island in your Kroxa deck conundrum, you say. Been there. Yep. Okay. So I kind of want to get back Fatal Push for one of these.
Let's see if they've got any piece of interaction. Pony just didn't have enough wild cards for a watery grave. <laughs> How much would one island really hurt? Yes, a lot. Trust me. All right, so I don't want to elk my land or my uh, artifact because they just have the bolt. They can bolt themselves. So I think I'm just going to elk the shadow. Say go. Still death shadow counter bolt to self. Ah, I don't really want to like waste stealing the shadow. I just want to keep ticking up the Oko if I can. Like Oko ticking up is such a like ridiculous thing to deal with. So much pressure. I think I'm going to throw a counter at this one. I'm going to counter back. Yep. That's fine. Opponent is now tapped out. Because, like, if Oko just sits here and makes food and makes them into elks, then, like, my opponent's never attacking through. Piving Needle. Guess that changes things. Okay. We've got a game. Assuming they've got another shock land. How'd you end up doing the 5k? I went like four and three. Um, so I copied and pasted like a Grixis Arclight Phoenix deck or deck list and ended up uh, beating. What did I beat? That's a good draw. Um, I beat Creativity, Lotus Field, Boros Convoke, Rakdos Midrange, and I lost to Spirits because I punted twice, games two and three. Um, and then I lost to Blue White Control twice. Which was rough. I felt like I had no interaction for blue white control. Tall dude with the mustache. Oh, the they played the hilarious woman at the end of the table. The the stupid inspiring vintage. <laughs> that was so great. How did uh how'd Stormwing Entity do for you? I know you said you're a big believer. Stormwing was cracked. Uh, the rest of the deck was bad. So the big issues I ran into, you were kind of running some stuff that addressed it. I had a huge issue with having phoenixes and not being able to get them out of my hand and onto the battle or uh, into the graveyard. Uh, I saw you were running some number of tainted indulgence. And then I had a big issue with um, not having like any sort of interaction. Felt like I had no uh, no spell pierces, no counters of any kind, and I was just getting run over by like blue white resolving chrome host sharks and Teferi and shark typhoon and whatnot. Like that, that chrome hose seed shark or whatever, that thing wrecked my world. All 
All right, we're saving this drown in the lock for Luris. Stormwing felt so good. Honestly, I wanted to rip the Phoenixes out and just make a blue black deck with Stormwing. I can respect that. I can respect that. I feel like it doesn't matter too much, but I think my opponent should have just like pinged a shadow and made their token instead of pinging me because now I have double lethal without needing to crack my fetch. Which I mean, isn't like a huge drawback, but it could allow me extra mana if I go for like, um, if I go for crack of food and now I can like fetch and shock to crack my food. Another dispute. That'd be hot. Nope. Loris, Loris go bye bye. Okay. So any removal spells lethal. And it does have more than enough to escape Kroxa now. But honestly, if they spend their entire turn like escaping Kroxa, it's probably not that bad of a deal for me. Yep. The removal's lethal, Bowmaster's lethal. That works. Kill you. Ah. Look at that. All Oko did was make one food and we won. Or I guess it helped a shadow. So it did more than make one food. I'm a liar. I apologize. I do appreciate them bringing in Pithing Needle for my two Okos, and that's it, though. Uh, we're definitely not boarding them out in the face of Pithing Needle either, because <laughs> uh, if opponent doesn't have the Needle, got Oko. I could drop a Counterspell, maybe bring back in a Stub. Looks like opponent wants to fight on the, the one mana front a little bit more. Game three to try to prove that we are the superior shadow deck. Hmm. If this doesn't scream trap hand, I don't know what does. I'm going to keep it because it's got a brainstorm. But. It feels trappy. Miss playing Shadow with Luris. They're finally reunited as we proceed to not play Shadow with Luris. Because Oko. Like, I, I wholeheartedly believe that Oko is about the only reason not to play Luris. Like, if you're playing Jund or something, you can make a reasonable argument of not playing it because of... Um, all right, if you got a Bowmaster, you got a Bowmaster. Uh, you can make a re reasonable argument of not playing it because of, uh, like, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Reasonable. Not perfect argument. Reasonable. But anything past that, and I think you're, like, pushing your luck pretty heavily. So let's put Shadow back and... They've got one card in the yard... Like Shadow Legions in back. I'm like, it's this is the 
the the brainstorm locked, but not really brainstorm locked because we just get bobble and stuff. So we're like drawing back on curve and we get our land. So obviously if they had a bow master, it could have been rough. They did not. So we're back in it. Dragon's Rage Channeler. One card type in the yard. And I'll make them have something here. Like, I really want a main phase brainstorm if I don't find a a third land. Wait, why? You are brainstorming in response to my Bowmaster ETB trigger. So my Bowmaster that has entered the battlefield now gets to... Resolve with a brainstorm. <laughs> Cold be like. <laughs> Gold do be like. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they probably never played Legacy. Okay, so what's like the general assumption of uh, of modern or of players jumping into Timeless for the first time? Like, do we think this is mostly people that played older formats or do we think this is like Are they trying to get me with like another instant or sorcery? So I'm going to target this three times regardless. Like, yeah. Um, okay. So do we think that like most of the people went from standard or something like that to timeless? Do we think there's a lot of people that play Legacy and Vintage and Modern or something that are jumping into Arena to try to build into Timeless? Um, because just from like my general experience, there have been a lot of people that have... And I understand that I fuck up Brainstorm constantly. I'm aware that I fuck up Brainstorm constantly. A lot of times, like, I'll force a brainstorm because I got nothing else to do, even if I shouldn't force the brainstorm. Uh, so it's like willingly fucking up the brainstorm. And it could be the case that other people are doing the same. And if that's like it, I understand. Um, but I've seen a lot of people that would have get gotten, like, majorly fucked up by Stifle or Bowmaster or something like that. So I have to assume that it's a lot of times like people just jumping into Timeless from like standard and having never played Bowmaster or Brainstorm or Stifle or anything like that before. Which is really cool. Like, it's awesome that a format's drawing in that many people. All right. So we clicked on the, the traditional whatever. I'm going to see if it's actually ranked. Okay, so this is ranked, right? <laughs> Having a pretty tough time beating Rhinos with Demir. Any tips? Um, Outside of the straightforward, like, counter the Rhinos... Try not to put yourself in a position to have, like, a Murktide bounced. So, Murktide plus protection. But that's, like, every matchup. 
Uh, EE, Chalice of the Void are great. Fluster Storm on your turn. Drown and Lock, Stubborn and Owl, whatever, on your opponent's turn. That way, if they have Force of Negation, they can't force your Fluster Storm on your turn because you get the Storm copies. Uh, if they've got uh, Force of Negation on their turn, they can't force because it's their turn. Your mana is very, very important, and you don't have a lot of it, so play around Tashana's Tidebinder if you can afford to. Bowmaster's pretty awful post-board. Like, when you're making 1-1s one and your opponent's making 3-3 three three or 4-4s. Four uh, this is the first time I've gotten to play against Necropotence. Well, turn 1. Turn 1 Ritual Necropotence. Let's see what this is all about. If I die, I die. Yeah, no problem. If you have a, uh, a specific list that you're really looking at and you want to drop it into chat so we can talk about it, you're welcome to do that too. Stex broken, TBH. Okay. The most broken thing I have seen on uh, Timeless so far that I got clapped by was turn one mountain or turn one any red source. Turn two, Red Source Wily Goblin, make a treasure. Turn three, Dark Ritual Muxus. And they did it both game one and game two and killed me on turn three, both games, off just like Dark Ritual into Muxus. <laughs> I got fucked up. <laughs> Death right shamans. Yep. Mm-hmm. One more time. See if we can find something interesting. Uh, push it in bad. We'll, like, throw island, island back. We'll draw one of the islands, but then we can just, like, throw away the other one. So kind of like just killing off one of these shamans here. Do life, push a shaman. They might have some insane turn three, but I don't know like what that turn three is yet. So I don't really know to play around it. Could have been an incentive to bobble first. So I kind of want to see what the broken turn three or turn four or something is. I kind of figure this game one is chalked because turn one Necropotence, like, what are you doing? Opponents paid 10 life, drawn 10 cards. Uh, but I want to see, like, what what the thing is, what the, the reason to play the deck is. I'm assuming I'm about to. Well, yeah, okay. Hardcast Luris, get back a Shaman, okay. So far, good. Not broken. That's pretty dope. But I like really banking on me not having the card Lightning Bolt in my 75. <laughs> They have to discard to exile. I guess Lurus is like just here for the lifelink. Shadow is currently a 4-4. Four, four. I could Oko Elk Delialia, but then it's a 7-7 seven, seven and I'm dead on board. I've got to play the Shadow. 
Uh, I do have a basic island on top, so I could, like, get the basic island. I could just play out the basic island. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I'm not dead to Luris attack. Plus double shaman activation, even if I fetch. Making mana. Lightning bolt my face. If I go to six. I'm dead to attack double shaman activation, so I need to counterspell the lightning bolt. Don't want to be dead to known information on board. Oh, yeah. So this just like Necropotence value. That's kind of cool. All right. And just to double check the wording on Necropotence. Yeah, you exile the top card, put it into your hand. So you don't actually draw the card. So Narset doesn't do anything. Spell Pierce looks great. Drown in the Lock. Probably good enough. I can Pithing Needle Necropotence. Do I want to bring in Unmoored Ego? Yeah, Unmoored Ego for Necropotence. I feel like that's not really where I want to be. Oh, wait, they have Shaman. Little DRS. Grim Shadow Heart. Ah, eh, Skirt is probably fine. Just like another stub enabler. Shredder. Meh. I might just like trim on an Oko, get a little leaner. I'm on a push. I really don't trim on push. Turn two or turn one shaman, turn two necropotence just seems kind of backbreaking. Let's trim on a bowmaster. Is there anything I want over a second bowmaster? Like, I really don't want my entire game plan to be like trying to stop um, necropotence. I don't think, like, I don't want to treat it as a Necropotence combo deck, I think. Uh, because they were just playing a bunch of really good cards outside of Necropotence. So I want, like, an opening hand that can deal with the fast start, a.k.a. Thoughtseize. But I don't want to be in a position where, like, I deal with the fast start and then my hand is just chock full of ways to, like, try to interact with Necropotence again. You know what I mean? Delta. Auto pay. Inquisition push Lyalia. Yeah, like this. This is really good to see. So we'll just take their Inquisition, pass the turn, they draw into the polluted Delta. You're playing around Stifle. I appreciate it. Let's 
figure out what we're doing. If their top card is completely dead like this, I might just resolve the Mystic Sanctuary. I know I don't get any value off of it, but it lets me like double spell if I find a three drop or find a one drop. And I don't need the counter spell up this turn. Bobbles are hot. Even hot, hot, hot. Got other black cleave cliffs, sure. Uh, go ahead. You're definitely counterspelling Lyalia. Oh, I didn't even realize that they had a fetch land out. That was bad. Could have gotten super punished off that. Death Rite Shaman. Is going to get a counter spell. Get closer to Treasure Cruise. Which we are going to cast. It. If I find a land, oh, that's such a great series of draws. I was going to say, if I find a land, I can spell Pierce and Necropotence off the top. The fact that I found, like, a fetch land and fatal push, and now I can interact with Lyalia is, like, chef's kiss. So that could not have gone better. It'll push you. And now I just get to like untap and double shadow with protection. Go. They followed up with like a Necropotence. Uh, yep. On to game three. I think it was a good choice to like keep in a bunch of the stuff that deals with the non-necropotent stuff. I uh, could bring in another stern scolding, answers Lyelia. Oh master really not looking too great. Notice Blood Moon. Uh we're not great against Blood Moon. We do have like stubs and pierces and counter spells. Probably okay. I wish Lyalia was modern legal. Lyalia would be pretty hot modern legal. Um, I don't know if I'd go as far as saying like too good or anything like that. Hmm. This looks pretty bad, right? We can, like, fight over a Deathrite Shaman on one, into Scourge on two, Oko on three. But that's probably just, like, too fair. So if I throw this back, what am I looking for? Thoughtseize... Yeah. Okay. 
We'll take this. Throwback. Island, say go. Hope you don't have turn one shaman. Looks like you do have a turn one shaman. Okay. That's much better for us. Stubborn denial. If like turn two dark ritual blood moon, that would. All right. Let's go get a watery grave. Brainstormed, hide some stuff from Inquisition. So we'll throw back. Round thought sees. Keep thought sees on top. Let them Inquisition away, Bowmaster or Stern Scolding. Either one's pretty, pretty fine with the home team. Thought sees you. Bobo push. Take a bow master. Lay out the land you know, or one of the lands you know. Go ahead. My turn. I would like to draw Drown in the Lock. Play another land you know. Now I can get my basics if need be. So you got three cards in uh, in your graveyard, is what you're telling me, eh? Got three Magical the Gathering cards in your graveyard. What a convenient number. All right, so next turn I can Island, Mystic Sanctuary, get back something. Eh, eh, I guess, I guess it's okay. I suppose of the list of things we have access to, that one is all right. Go. And I'm more than likely Mystic sanctuary back the, uh, the Drown in the Lock... Okay, we can kill this, though. So maybe I want a Mystic Sanctuary back to Brainstorm. I know I want to trade off Bowmaster for Lyelia. And I'm pretty sure I want a live card into my hand. Drowns probably most upside. Oko! Oko! Oko Mystic Sanctuary! Man, format's easy. That put us at 3 0. Oko, indeed, Broco. <laughs> So I played in an SCG Open. Who knew this game was so easy? Uh, the person registering Oko. <laughs> Everybody out, else out here messing around with like stuff we don't care about. Necropotence. Psh, that's not Oko. Cards are giving me PTSD. But it's so fun when like everybody is playing pretty broken stuff. And there's actually fair decks that are going over very well. Like, our deck is, I think, I'm going to use the words fair and oko in the same sentence, so if that, like, offends your senses, I understand. I think out of the lists that are doing something that could be relatively considered fair with oko, we're probably towards the top of that list. 
This is just like a three mana value planeswalker. Like, look at what they're doing. Look at what they're doing. And you think we're doing something unfair? See what is going on. Light step pathway. Are you going to sack it? All right. So that's going to resolve. And then we're going to fatal push the ever living hell out of it. This card is insane. Like, I've played against this card a lot in Historic. And so many times, if you don't have, like, a Shatterstorm effect, you just lose to it. Double Retrofitter Foundry. So this becomes a Samurai Creature Token. Sack a Servo. Create a Servo. Sack a Servo. Sack a Thopter. Uh, do I want to brainstorm looking for like a Thought Seize? Do I know about the Tainted Pack deck? I do not. Eight blast could be eight blast. Are the blasts legal in the format? I really don't know. Like, I I don't know shit about any of the like busted stuff in the format that wasn't historic. So any of like the uh, anthologies and stuff like that that have been added over time, I do not know about those cards. Um. Especially if they didn't see play in Historic. So there could be a bunch of stuff that I just do not know is legal that's in the format. They can create a 1-1 one, one colorless servo artifact token. So I think I'm going to attack in with the squad... See if opponent decides to like make a Thopter and try to trade. This is Servo. They have to pay the cat or to sack a Servo so they cannot do that. We'll just ping off said Servo. Get a little extra damage. Um, you know, Watery Grave. Thought sees ya. See what's going on. Oh, it is 8 Blast. Good call. Good call. So we're going to 14 off the Thought Seas. If they hit a land, they still can't light up the stage. They could Oni Cult Anvil. So I think that's what I want to take. Could be if all its cards are on Arena. Yeah, I could be. I don't know what all's on Arena. Uh, Tainted Pack used to be the best deck in Historic two years ago until Thassa's Oracle got banned. It's a deck of one-ofs. It's easy to craft since it's a bunch of one-ofs. I think that's cool to have like a good, effective deck that's easy to make on Arena. Because like when I first started getting into uh, Historic, everything I saw was like, build mono red. It's really easy to build mono red. And I started looking at it, and Mono Red had like 2,000 rare wild cards, and I couldn't build anything with it. And I was like, oh, this kind of sucks. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I know I would like to Oko this turn. We'll 
We'll attack in first, because I think attacking is like kind of free here. Not really worried about Easter on the back end. Uh, I do have to ask myself, do I want to Oko like a retrofitter foundry? Probably not. I think I'm probably happier just like making a food. Kind of let them have their retrofitter shenanigans. Because if they end up dealing some extra damage to me, I can always uh, Mystic, or Mystic Sanctuary back into like the Bowmaster or Fatal Push or something and then brainstorm to draw into it. And it doesn't look like they want to draw with, um, with these baubles. Oh, and if they're sacking retrofitter foundries, deal. Hulking armies is my favorite new interaction in the format. Respect. Or just draw the sanctuary. Okay. Um, I could... Elka food and attack. They've got a light up the stage in hand. So if they Oni cult next turn... They can cast light up the stage. So maybe I want to consider like thought seizing that away. Zerza Saga and Timeless, it is not, thankfully. Thankfully, it is not. That would have been rough. All right, these are all pretty good. Let's go Flooded Strand. Ledger Shredder. Draw into the Shredder. Thought Seize Away. Um, I kind of don't want to hit my food so that I can have the extra life gain. So I think I'm going to try this whole elking up a, uh, an orc army. So if they draw off the Mishra's baubles, I hopefully will get another army token. We're going to find out. One way or the other. But they gave Ragavan? Yeah, but you got like Fatal Push, Lightning Bolt, all the, the jank interaction. Uh, they're attacking at me. Sure. This could mean they top decked another light up the stage. I don't think it's like the worst thing for me right here. What you got? Dragon's Rage Channeler. Sacking Retrofitter Foundry. Deal. And just go ahead and push you. I, I should have waited till my turn to Ledger Shredder. I should have waited. Crank in with our army token. Yeah. Because I could have ledger shreddered and connived over this flooded strand to get it out of the way. So that was not good. Not good. Just gonna make another treasure or make another food. You realize you played on arena? I do from time to time. Like, 
Timeless has been really fun, so I've been wanting to check it out. Seems like a really sweet format. But I don't usually, like, this weekend I heard a lot of people talking about Standard and really thinking that it's in a really good spot right now. So maybe I'll try that uh, out at some point. But I hate the wild card system. So I just don't have, like, nearly enough wild cards to build a bunch of stuff. And I don't plan on putting a bunch of money into Arena. I haven't looked at any meta. You're the first timeless stream I've watched. Aw. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And I'm, I'm really interested to see, like, how the timeless format changes over the next few months. Because I do think there are some cards that are, like, head and shoulders above everything else. And they probably need to be addressed at some point. Uh, for example, you might not agree... But Oko is just like one of the most busted things, in my opinion, that has ever been printed. And there's a reason that it's banned in like damn near everything. <laughs> so I could very reasonably see it being a card that they decide is not uh, not healthy to have around after a bit. But... I wish they did the Pokemon style where real packs gave you digital packs. I wish they would do like a conversion system for wild cards. Like, hey, I want to trade in 20 uncommons and get four rares or something. Because right now they have an option where you can buy wild cards, but it's like 10 bucks for four rares, which is just stupid when we're talking about uh, a digital currency. You're just jealous of Oka's juicy six pack. Oh, you have no idea how jealous I am of that. Like, openly jealous of Oka's six pack. Isn't it Arena's goal to have modern in the next years? I've heard rumors. I don't know. So, I have this like wild theory in my head that Timeless on Arena is like. Wizard's way of starting the bridge between Pioneer and Standard or Explorer and Standard on Arena and the Eternal formats. And they're just going to keep adding cards like, uh, or adding sets like Cons of Tarkir in flashback form uh, until you can build like full Pioneer, full, uh, full Modern, whatever. And it's going to be a slow process, clearly. But that's my thought, is this is just like a step along that line. Um, I think that would be a really cool way to implement it. So we'll see. I should have thought about light up the stage. I kind of had it in my mind for half a second, like, oh, light up the stage would be a really good reason to uh, to not let the DRC hit me. But then that thought just kind of like psh, out the window. All right, I want to see if they crack this fetch into turn. So they crack this. We respond with Bowmaster to kill the Channeler. They cannot cast an instant and uh, surveil. If you play Modern on Arena, I would feel somewhat spiteful simply for the fact that I'd have to remake my expensive ass paper deck. Fair. Um, I think people really like the art and the animation and stuff like that on Arena. So I could easily see like Arena being the preferred avenue if they had Modern and Legacy and whatnot. Um, personally, I'm a big fan of the fact that I know that my 
uh, Magic Online collection has, like, real value. Not that I have, like, much of a collection anymore. I feel like I've sold off most everything. But... If I did... I'm just going to throw back extra treasure crews. Shuffle those away. Let's go... Thoughtsies. Thoughtsies, these, 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 these. See what you got going on. Shrapnel Blast. Now, do I want to play out Shadow? Is this any target? One damage to each opponent. Sacrifice and make a 2 2. So. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and play out Shadow. Can't say I'm really very into Legacy these days. Modern just feels like better Legacy to me without all the goofy-ass cards like Comet or Initiative. Yeah, I know a lot of people that kind of have the same opinion. Like, the straight two sets, especially the ones that are like, oh, this is only legal in Legacy and Commander... I've kind of gotten a little overdone in recent years. Aw. Rude. That's fine. Helps treasure crews. Uh, they've gotten a little overdone in recent years. So I definitely understand that thought. Am I going to get shrapnel blasted? Pretty okay with that. That means they are not adding a Luris to their hand. And I'm no math expert, but usually Luris not in hand is greater than Luris in hand. Oh. Okay, now we've got a thing. Five cards in the yard. So I would have to tap out to treasure crews. Flores gets back channeler or synthesizer right now. So I could just like hold up spell pierce to try to hit a uh, synthesizer that comes back. I think that's my better play here is let them Luris use the opportunity to resolve something and then untap and treasure cruise and hope I can like find an answer to the Luris. Really hope this is a synthesizer. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Now, do I want to Fatal Push to make this um, Treasure Cruise Dirt Cheap? Oh, uh, you are not... You are not giving me this for free. You are not letting me have this. Oh, Ponito... Ah, uh, ah, uh, so nice, so nice of them. I'm not used to opponents being this friendly to me. Just letting me do this stuff. All right, well, that could have been better. All right, let's kill the the one one. Ah, oh, you only make a one one if that happens during your turn. Okay. Sleeping pill coming in with a tier one sub. Thank you so much 
Welcome to the subscribers. Enjoy access to all of our sweet custom death shadow emotes that I'm totally dropping in chat. Uh, resolves. Do we want to mystical dispute or mystic sanctuary a treasure cruise? One or more artifacts you control leave the battlefield during your turn. Create a 1 1. Ability only triggers once each turn. I could like No. I'm gonna get a breeding pool. It's a top deck in Oko. I mean for when I top deck in Oko. Alright. Worth a try. All right, go ahead. We got to find something relevant. The blocks. Yep. A loop has been presented. Ah, you're running Bowmaster? Dang. Yikes. Yikes for me, dog. Oko off the top rope. Oko off the top rope. Alright, well, it's got Fatal Push for the Bowmaster. Second Anvil. Got another Bowmaster? Nope. Okay. Okay. No. Counter it. Get it out of here. Right, you keep that ornithopter back. Do you remember Oko and Legacy and Miracles or Ren and Six? So I got clapped in a Legacy GP by Infect playing uh, Ren and Six because just every time I killed their Ink Moth, they'd get it back. Um, I don't know what I draw in their turn here that helps out. I was going to say, like, another Bowmaster, maybe. Is this Target? Not. Kill that one. Puts me to two. They sack this, put me to one. And we're totally going to rip the Oko off the top, and it's going to come back and save us. Oko. 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 Not Oko. Alright. Maybe we should have gotten back that treasure cruise. Alright. We get game three. That's pl a plus. I kind of want Shadow Heart back. It was like a black Shadow Heart. Could easily kind of run away with it if they don't find an answer right away. That's just an insane amount of life gain and a great body on the board. Dude, Shadow Heart is my reason to play Arena. This... This is, I think, the most busted arena-only card that exists. That's my hot take for the day. I, like, I think this card is god-tier 
on Arena in like the Arena only formats. And just nobody like plays it or plays around it or respects it. Ragavan and Dreadhorde Arcanist died for Daze's sins. Ragavan, yeah. Dreadhorde Arcanist, eh. Maybe a bit. This hand's pretty bad. So I've got all of my mana fixed. If I top deck like an Oko or something, it kind of runs wild. But the hand just doesn't do anything early, so I think I'm going to ship it. Ugh. Immediate regret. All right, we will try to not brainstorm lock ourselves too badly. Soul Guide Lantern. That is about the least scary thing you could have done on turn one. I, I approve. I approve. And please, in the name of all things just and holy, have a second land so I don't look like the greediest person to ever exist. Yes, got there. Okay, Shredder back, Drown back. I do not particularly care about the order because I'm probably not doing either of those things. Soul Guide Lantern also only exiles an opponent's graveyard, so I don't have to worry about it, like, nuking mine. All right, I don't have to worry about it nuking theirs and nuking my Drown in the Locks. What I meant to say. What you got? <laughs> I would love to see like shrapnel blast, sack the soul guide, kill the shredder. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing double spell here. Let me like connive over the other shredder. So guys, just sack fodder for blast. Fine with me. Are they going to sack it to Oni Colt Anvil? Ah. Uh. So if this is something like Sack, Lantern, Ping Me, Light Up the Stage, then they might just trigger like Double Connive. And I'm pretty happy with that, so. Orcish Bowmaster, you say. That also triggers double connive, but it triggers it before the Bowmaster resolves. An artifact in the yard, so the current current delirium count is one. Is this only yeah until end of turn? No love shredder and a bowmaster meta. What if I draw all my cards before the bowmaster resolves? And it just like doesn't matter. Donks. 
Or what if they just don't cast the Bowmaster because I draw before they resolve? That feels pretty good. What if we just have like the most epic staring contest of all time? Uh, I don't even think I want a Bowmaster. Not even to Bowmaster their Bowmaster. Way. Got it. Hope oh, that's land on top. Can't decide if I want to run an Eldrazi in the sideboard against Mill. Uh, a lot of people playing now, which I hate. I mean, it's not a bad plan. I'm not against it by any means. I, I do think it depends, like, what... Uh, you're playing Mardu, right? So it's got like a little more effect for you since you can't run counter spells. Like it's not bad out of Jund. But you also really want it to be in a variant that's like not going to run... Uh, Dogfish, what's up? How you feeling? Uh, you don't want it in a variant that's going to like care a lot about your own graveyard. So if you're running just a bunch of artifacts, sorcery, land. They do not have delirium currently. Wait, did I miss something? Oh, creature off Ornithopter, sure. You gonna try to bowmaster? Well, Darren Epicure. I'm gonna counter this to keep a body off the board. Okay. Not the most exciting place to be. Kill this. They do get a Bowmaster trigger. Oh, I want that Oko so bad. I don't really want to fetch and shock for it, though. No good attacks here. Ooh, immediate regret for the Oko. How good is this format? Pretty good. I'm kind of getting clapped this round. But pretty good overall. Alright, so we'll resolve the connive. Ditch. Blooded Strand and just Spell Pierce to light up the stage? Or do I want to ditch Fatal Push and Spell Pierce? Need a 
Ditch that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, a pretty solid format. Or block one of these and they get to sack it off to the anvil. All right. Scourge is really good. Let's put back... <sighs> what happens if I... Put back Strand Spell Pierce. Attack with Ledger Shredder is a five. Deal five. Play out. Like after I play out Scourge. Walk here. Take three. Go to three. They sack one. Ditching ears. You're attacking. We're seeing if maybe opponent messes up, attacks, and we get like push on the way back for lethal or something like that. If they have like a bolt or something, so be it. Or dead to blast regardless, so I can't play around that. But what I can play around is them just putting like an untapped blocker and I get push plus counter spell back up. So if they just pass the turn here, yeah, we kill them. Play to your outs. Play to your outs. Boom. Boom. The outs, they've been played to. Nice. What do we got next? Did you go next? Astral Wingspan. Four and a blue. Convoke. Enchant creature. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has flying. Kind of cool. Do we have a pack? We have two packs. And a rare wild card. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't even care about like the cards in the set. Just give me the rare wild cards. I think we need uh slag tight stalkers, whatever. We need one more rare wild card to get our play set of lightning bolts. Take a look at that tainted pack, please. Deck that basically only exists on arena. Do you have a list to it? Because MTG, uh, timeless, tainted. All right. Let's see. Tainted packed. Two packed. That's his Oracle. So you're just trying to assemble packed Oracle.
Yeah, I mean, it's a tainted pack deck. Like, I don't really know what you uh you want me to say about it. <laughs> yeah, like that's the same combo in Commander, right? You can tainted pact or um, demonic consultation and just exile your library to Oracle for the win. So, like, it's a thing that Commander has done a lot of. It's cool that you can play it on Arena. I don't know how good or, like, consistent it is. And, yeah, I get the idea of... Uh, of you only need one copy of everything. But at the same time, your deck is, like, rare... Rare, 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 rare. Another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, another one. Not rare, cool. Rare, rare, not rare, not rare. Uh, common, whatever. Rare. I don't know what demonic tutor is on arena. It could be a rare, could be mythic. I don't know. Rare. Rare, 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 mythic, uh, uncommon, that's kind of cool. I think memory lapse might be a rare. Um, what else we have? Brainstorm, I can't remember what it is. It could be a rare. Rare, rare, bobble I think is uncommon. Rare, rare, Mythic, maybe? Rare. So, like... Yeah, you need one copy of stuff, but that's still a fuck ton of rare wild cards to get the deck together. Unless you just already have a bunch of this stuff sitting around. So, yes. Really cool deck. No, not as easy to pull off. Unless you've been, like playing a bunch of standard and you have a bunch of these cards and just need like your your fetch lands and whatnot or you play a bunch of limited and you've got the um the mystic archive stuff which i still like brainstorm it's a rare why why has brainstorm ever been printed as rare in the history of magic i don't think so i don't believe that it has same thing with Lightning Bolt. Why rare? Why you do this, Moto? But yeah, you can play the two packed for sure because, like, if you have one pack, then you can't name the other packed or draw a second copy of a packed. Why the two Thassa's Oracle? I don't know because then you can't, like, Pact, but I guess you're never casting Pact if you've got Thassa's Oracle in your library. Mm, I don't care a ton about Bowmaster. But I do have a Brainstorm that I'd like to resolve at some point. So... I'll just go ahead and fire this off. They're probably going to shuffle away. That's fine. Um, double shots. I need to get the list updated, but I was trying to figure out if I could get the list updated on uh, Stream Decker since it's an arena list. So somebody's going to have to remind me after this game to check that out. Unless I can. Yeah, because I can't go back to the main menu during the game. You have two pack man, you use one to get Oracle and the other to combo off. Okay. I buy that. I buy that with a dollar. Oh, we could double shadow and one gets bowmaster, one gets pushed. So that feels pretty bad. So let's just pass it back. And I could.
could like brainstorm on their upkeep to try to get this bowmaster and then just like fatal push the bowmaster. That worth it. These are all pretty good magic cards. They want to put back like a push and an extra shadow. Yeah, I don't have the green for Oko, but I'm also, like, not running that many busted cards like Oko. So I kind of want to save it. Uh, like, hold on to the Oko for when I do find another green source instead of just letting it go. Like, more than likely, eventually, we will draw a green source. And having Oko when we draw the green source, pretty good. Since that is, like, one of the most busted cards we can play in, like, a mid-range mirror like this. Uh, Counterspell, Siphon Insight. Charm Push. the top two cards of target opponent's library, exile one of them face down, put the other on the bottom of that library, and play the exile card for as long as it remains exiled. They can siphon insight into lands. So I kind of have to decide if I want to fight over that. Mm. Yes, yeah, so that's totally my underground sea or underground river. They wouldn't play that. Let's get back a brainstorm. I think that forces some action. I could go to like siphon insight the brainstorm. So I'll play shadow. So if they want to siphon insight. They don't get to counter my shadow. Now I get to draw brainstorm. They've got fatal push, a whole mess of counter spells. So I'm hoping that they will either counter this brainstorm and I find a land to get Oko or they let it resolve and I find a land to get Oko. That, my friends, is a land to get Oko. Shh. I would like to make a food. Yo. Uh, 
I'm at two. No longer at two. All right. Good draws are good. So make another food. Fatal push this. Say go. Shocking. What do we got? Are they just holding up double counter spells? Is that the plan here? I'm just going to make food. Sauron's <laughs> All right. Uh, what are we giving them face up and face down? Like, if I give them double Hallowed Fountain, odds are pretty good that they'll take that. They could have Mystic Sanctuary. Maybe I should have done, like, Flooded Strand and a Hallowed Fountain. Can't be blocked except by creatures. Can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. Let's eat a food. Ass. Why are they not? Why are they not adding Luris? Are they trying to get to like add Luris to hand and play it? I will take a Bowmaster. Here's a Ledger Shredder. Yep. They have like another Sauron's Ransom. Swords to Plowshares, Snapcaster Mage. So maybe yep. Snapcaster or everything else. Got it. If they're going to like add and play out the Luris and Bobble. There's Luris. I would like to create a food. Pass the turn. Do they Luris? We counter spell. They counter spell, and then they can get back Bowmaster, which is fine because all I want is to swap a food for the Luris, and then I can get back like Shadow or Shredder or something, and. Yeah. You got a bow master.
I hope it is everything you ever hoped and dreamed it would be. Because I got a Luris. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? Feels good. And I think we're just going to play a shadow and pass. And if my opponent wants to, like, swords my shadow, power to him. You're going to gain three life. You've got it. We, uh, we fighting over this Luris. This, this is my Luris now. Can't have it back. Draw a shadow. So I think I'm going to elk a bowmaster. So that I can shredder plus shadow. Ditch an extra Oko. Attack! Ah! Ah! Got it. Go ahead. Swords push bowmaster. So I could give them swords or I could give them like push bowmaster. I don't really mind giving them push bowmaster. And if they want to take swords, swords haul, they can go for it. I mean, if they want to crack a food, gain three life, and, like, push the Luris, sure. Got it. That Luris has done plenty for me at this point. <laughs> the amount I care about this Luris at this point is, uh, fairly non-existent. Now uh, you've got a bowmaster, bowmaster, bowmaster. <laughs> All right, I cannot block with a creature with greater power. But I can block with a Ledger Shredder. Oh, I gotta sack my bone. My Shredder. It's kind of lame. Sack it. Okay. We're definitely pinging this off, right? Um, ping me. Are they? I guess they're dead if I draw a removal spell. When do they get to choose a new ring bearer? You win, you choose ring bearer. Mm. 
Anybody know? I'm going to go for the removal spell. God, it's so easy. It's so easy. <laughs> uh, they have to attempt to uh, to get a new ring bear deal. Who even cares? Who cares about no stinking ring bearer. We got Oko. They choose when the ring bearer dies. I'm getting conflicting results here. I need some clarification. What do we see creature wise? We saw Bowmaster, Snapcaster, Luris. Be another time that I want stern scolding. Trim a shadow against the uh, what's it called? Swords to Plowshares deck. Yeah, uh, Stream Decker is still sh or showing the old deck list because I got to figure out um, uploading arena list. So we're going to do that after this match. Way better. They're back shadow. It's a ways off. I'm not going to lie, those uh, those Sauron's Ransoms did not look very good for our opponent there. I also understand that that was definitely a low side of variance on Sauron's Ransom, but... Ooh, they kept a one lander. Tyron's <laughs> ransom these nuts. Yes. That's the dogfish energy I've missed. That's brainstorm. Pretty good. We're back. Shadow Heart and. Maybe like Shadow Heart and a counter spell. And shuffle. Punish for my choice of what land to get. Yep. Sauron Transform's good with Delve. Have we seen a Delve card out of them? I don't think we have. They're just ransoming for the sake of ransom. Push, push, swords, ransom, counterspell, whatever the hell this thing is. Exile target, non-token, artifact, creature, or enchantment. Oh, they do have treasure cruise. Okay. Um, I'm going to take counterspell because if we top deck like a green source, we just win. 
with Oko. They have nothing in hand to deal with it. Yeah, like, I might just play out Shadow to try to get towards baiting, like, this Treasure Cruise into a counterspell. But I don't think I really care if they kill the Shadow. Now, like, I think every... Every part of my being is just devoted to resolve Oko, and nothing else matters. No. Looks like Oko mana. Pretty sure they're going to get to resolve something between Sauron's Ransom and Treasure Cruise. And I hate that for us. I think I let them resolve the Sauron's Ransom. Counter the Treasure Cruise. But... Siphon Insight, Basic Island. Care about Fatal Push. Yeah. Honestly, kind of surprised that they took the Siphon Insight pile. Like, is that really what you want to be doing with your mana? Hoping there's something relevant off the top of my library. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Drawing up to ten. I just letting this resolve. All right. Discard Siphon Insight, Fragment Reality. For some reason I thought they had to discard another. Uh, yeah, let's just start this thing. If you haven't gotten to see Oko before in the control matchups, it's basically just like tick up, make a food, tick up, make the food into a dude, tick up, make a food, tick up, make the dude into a food. Rinse, lather, repeat. Are we finding timeless lists other than Twitter? The old cranium. That's about it.
Brainstorm, you got it. You're dead, deckers. Are you finding your good times? Okay. Where are you finding your good timeless list? We haven't dropped a match today. Not like we haven't dropped many. We have not lost a match today. If that's not considered like good timeless deck, I don't know what is. <laughs> Yeah, want lands. I'm gonna, I'm gonna elk a food. Go to combat. Snapcaster. Stern scolding. Counter spell Mystical Dispute. Am I sure I want to turn my food into an elk? Pretty sure. I like having elked up food. Mm. You got it. I'm gonna ping me. Kind of rude. Kind of rude in GL. Here's a shadow. Go. I do have another Swords to Plowshares in hand. All right. What does this do? Exile target non-token artifact creature or enchantment. Its controller puts a random creature card with lesser mana value from their library into the battlefield tapped. Joke's on you. We have no creatures of lesser mana value. I get that the joke wasn't actually on me, but Tony's going to attack at me with a bowmaster. Uh, I'm beginning, beginning to question if opponent understands this whole Oko thing. I'm gonna make a food. Walk, go. We're gonna siphon inside me. One, two, three available. I know they can't hit another Oko. Sure. You could hit like a Thought Seize or a Shadow or something. That's kind of fun. It's going to hit one of my Brainstorms. Sure. Keep on top. No blocks. Snapcaster Mage. So this could hit Brainstorm, Fatal Push, Fragment Reality, Treasure Cruise, Sauron's Ransom. Attempt to Drown in the Lock.
We don't appreciate your value kind around these parts. Swords, my elk. So my elk that could have sacked to gain three life, but is no longer able to sack to gain three life has now been sacked to gain three life. It's the circle of life. And it gains us three. And go. Bowmaster numero two. Got it. Resolve. Take it. I feel like they just don't want to add Luris to their hand and have me steal it. Oh, they added Luris to their hand, and now I'm going to steal it. Potentially. I feel like they could have at least given the elk trample. Boop. I would like to kill this. All right, so this is showing one, but I want to target their bow master. Is this going to like auto resolve on the brainstorm if I cast it here? It lets you choose even though it's saying one and like automatically tapping my sanctuary. Okay, I see. I see. Thank you, sleeping pill. Now we're going to bowmaster your bowmaster, then you're going to brainstorm. And we're going to bowmaster a whole heck of a lot more. Ah, ah, ah. Carry on. What do they have in the yard? Snapcaster, bowmasters, bobbles, the only things they can get back with Luris. I might just let Luris resolve. One, two, three. I really am considering just letting this resolve. It probably doesn't change anything. Like, if I let this resolve and they go for Bowmaster or Snapcaster and I counter that and they have a counter spell, then... That's the exact same as if I countered Luris and they countered my counter and then just like had a bowmaster or something. Yeah, it probably doesn't matter. But maybe they like try to snap treasure cruise and we counter that. I don't know. I don't know. Oko's stupid. If you're playing blue and green, play Oko. Like, honestly, what are you even supposed to change? I'm sure there's 57 better cards I could be playing, but... But Oko. Oko, stupid. I think I'm just going to drop, like, a Bitter Blossom from the board and add a third Oko. Why not? I can craft 
Oh wait, I just have Oko. <laughs> Next perfect. What a stupid magic card. And we only need one more rare wild card to be able to get a play set of lightning bolts. And that'll help out with like Grixis and Phoenix and Rakdos and whatever else. So I feel like for most of these builds, Lightning Bolt is like the only thing that's historic. Uh, Lightning Bolt's like the only thing that's really holding back. Uh, obviously, some of them are missing like fetch lands and things. And I'll have to get those, but we can kind of mess around with non on Jun based fetch lands. Uh. Is it the only thing I'm missing from Grixis? I miss Grixis. Yeah, so this was just like throwing together a jank first draft until I got lightning bolts. But lightning bolt good, everything else not lightning bolt. <laughs> stretch, 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 stretch. And I'm probably going to end up just like taking this VOD from today. Uh, uh, spinach, I missed your follow. Sorry about that. Like 10 minutes ago. Uh, probably going to end up just like taking the VOD from today and uploading it straight to uh, YouTube. Because I think it'd be pretty sweet to just show... Yeah, we played like however many matches today and losing losing is not coming easy. Lightning strikes basically lightning bolt. So I messed around with a blue red is it Phoenix deck and I didn't have lightning bolt for that, which would clearly be, you know, good in your is it Phoenix deck. So I just played shock. It came up a surprising number of times that that three extra damage uh, or that one extra damage would have been nice. What's the record for today? Something in zero. We we have not lost a match yet. Um, I'm not sure how many matches we've played. I feel like somewhere around... I don't know. What do y'all think? Like eight or so? Kind of like drawing into Scourge against the deck that's uh, fetching and shocking on turn one. Phoenix sucks with the amount of David Bomey. <laughs> David Bomey. <laughs> All right. Uh, opponent, welcome to Legacy. We're going to hide. Throwmaster probably doesn't seem that great here. So I'm going to put Scourge back on top. And I'm thinking Fatal Push. So if they follow up with like a death right shaman, I can interact while still holding up like stub for turn three or hold up thought sees. So I think I'm going to go like that back. Then now, if I need to shuffle away the Scourge, I can. What is this? Restless Vents. Tapped, add black or red. One black, red. Until end of turn, Restless Vents becomes a 2-3 black and red insect creature with menace. Whenever it attacks, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. All right. So we know about Fatal Push. I'm just going to shuffle away. 
Oh, what's his face there? And we'll just get a tapped land. Nice. Yep. I don't want to see if they'll just go like land vents. Okay. Is this a Minsk Enbu? Minsk Enbu? Maybe we get to double up here if it is and go like Stub plus Bowman? Stub plus Bowchamp? Stub plus bow god. Oh, it's going to overgrown tomb. Um. Yeah, I'm just going to be mana efficient. They kill it. They kill it. All of the Planeswalker voice lines on Arena. Go for the eye. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. I usually have like all my audio turned off. And. It's pretty hard to not do that one. Um, 2G Mix Embu. Let me read up, because I think this is the scariest thing they can resolve if I go for the Oko. So I want to I want to know for sure what the damage is going to be. So slow. I just want to look at Minx and Boo. ETB, at the beginning of your upkeep, you create Boo, a legendary 1 1 red hamster creature token, trampled fa yeah, haste. Put 3 1 1 counters on it. Take up to four. So if I play out Oko and they follow up with a Minx and Boo, I can kill the Minx. Min Minsk, Minx thing. If I make a food. And I'm going to keep my token back in case of Ragavan. That is not a mink skin boo. Thought sees away. All right. That's a pretty good revolt enabler. And it can also give me a Mystic Sanctuary to get back, like, a Brainstorm or a Drown in the Lock. Uh, yeah. Kind of into that. Let me get back a Brainstorm. What? Jar Seal and Timeless? Because Timeless is everything that is on Arena. So it includes like uh, uh, what's it called? It includes like the anthologies. It includes the uh, alchemy stuff. All of that. All on Arena.
It said that it was, but had a paper version too. Well, I'm sure with stuff like this, there's like two different printings, kind of like with Shadow Heart. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, and Shadow Heart's able to like get away with it because they do two functionally different things. So we're going to turn Bowman into an elk and we're going to kill you because Hoko. I mean, like, that dude's cool, but no Oko. Have you read Oko? <laughs> Oko don't give a shit about Jar Seal. <laughs> You see how many like how many six pack abs this dude doesn't have showing? Why would Oko care? <laughs> but yeah, if it's like a a rebalanced card, for example, on uh historic unholy heat deals four instead of six if you've got delirium, if it's rebalanced for arena. It's the paper printing that's in Timeless. So in Timeless, um, Unholy Heat deals six. But if it's two different cards and not a rebalanced one, then they go with, uh, I guess, both of them. So Bitter Blossom's nice. The other Oko's nice. Could bring in the other drown. Like trim on some thought seizes. Maybe. When does that thing trigger? TG. Does it trigger on combat? So I kind of want noxious grasp. We'll see. We'll see. Jar seal. Beginning of combat. Yeah, so instant speed interaction. Still get some value out of it. You just have to make sure that you kill it during their main phase and not um, as they enter combat or the ability goes on the stack. Keep. Fatal push. Nope. Now that I know about this jar seal card, I kind of want to Save my fatal push uh, to use after I crack my delta. I think they're going to obnixilis here. Where does it cast a card from? Your graveyard. Solve. So we're going to start with a brainstorm. Auto pay. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things is an OCO. Let's go island back. Shadow back. It done. Activate ability, go get a watery grave. It'll push you. Oko, thief of everything my opponent has ever held dear in their entire life. And I think I'm just going to elk a bobble. Why not? 
Gives me a nice little wall in case they do top deck like a Ragavan or a Minxkin Boo or something. We got a Bobble Elk. I wouldn't crack that. Like, if I didn't Elk the Bobble, I wouldn't be sacking the Bobble anyway because of Bowmaster. So I kind of like the idea of just Elking it. We've also got Delta Myth, the Hunt Master of the Fells. Yes, opponent, I love you. I love you so much. God, you are my hero right now. You're the coolest person I've seen today. That's really, really bad into Oko. But you're still the coolest person I've seen today. Oh, it's super dead. Like, this is terrible for my opponent. But I respect the hell out of it. Like, so, so much. Are we the baddies playing Oko? We are. We are horrible individuals right now. And I'm very much ashamed of everything that I've ever done in competitive magic. And I hate this so much. Opponent, I just want you to know that, like, your deck's cooler than mine. You play Hunt Master. That. It just hurt my soul. Killing that. Hmm. Yeah, you got it. Fuck that Oko up. How I feel playing Grief right now. <laughs> so true. So true. That's a shadow. Uh, I'm going to make this food into an elk. You either die the hero or you live long enough to see yourself become an elk. Go. Gonna kill one of them. Fuck it up. Shieldred's Edict. Sack a Planeswalker. Uh, do we think they've got a Veil of Summer? That would be pretty hot. I know that I've got another Oko, but if I can just get him to like spend a bunch of resources on this Oko, then the second one's just going to be like back breaking. You got it. I feel like people just do not understand how much fucking loyalty Oko has and why it's stupid because of that. Like, you're just sitting here, tick up, tick up, tick up, tick up, tick up, and all of your tick ups do something extraordinarily relevant. Um,. Get a brainstorm. It's gonna like cling to dust me. Be pretty hot. Oko is an absolute BS magic card. It absolutely is. Uh, K Command, return a creature, returning Hunt Master of the Fells, discard a card. Sure, I'm gonna ditch a shadow. Finally kill him and they just play another one. Yeah, because it's got like 43,000 loyalty. So just nothing is killing it efficiently. You're just sitting there like plus two, make a food, plus one, make a dude, plus two again, make another food. 
Ooh, smart. Smart. You're going to strip me off green and shuffle away my brainstorm. I'm down, opponent. I am. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Uh, I will go find a land. And doesn't really matter if it enters tapped or not. I respect it. Honestly, I could probably just let this hunt master resolve, but we're not about that life. We are about the life that involves Oko making things into food and or elks. You have got it. Oko won you more games in Shadow? Uh two reasons for that. One, Oko is one of the most banworthy cards of all time. So <laughs> It's going to win you more games than just about any card you could possibly put in a spot like that. Uh, two, we have played against an extraordinary amount of one-for-one -one removal decks. So, Fatal Pushes and Swords to Plowshares and Lightning Bolts and Unholy Heats and whatever that white uh, exile something and flip into a lower CMC creature thing is and shrapnel blast and all that and oko just doesn't give two shits about any of those <laughs> so whoops yoshin yodian yotian yodian frontliner Ever it attacks another target creature you control gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Okay, let's see about uh, exporting the deck list. So import no export. I don't want to copy it to my clipboard. I want to like or wait. Can I decks? Ace deck list. Wait. Deck name Timeless Sultai Shadow. Submit. Is this going to work? Heck yeah. Bruh, I found it. Deck list. Wait. Dream deck or not in the chat? Stream Decker. Stream Decker, where are you at? Join. All right. Try now. Deck list. Aha! We figured it out. Uh, Binoco is so much fun, just not fun when it's against yourself, right? <laughs> Beating other people with Oko is the most thrilling thing you can ever do in your life. Getting beat by Oko uh, just feels like you got kicked in any painful spot on your body over and over again with no regard for human safety. Um, but I was starting a story earlier. I played in an SCG Open, and I lost my winning end to top eight. But up until that point, I had lost two matches the entire event, and both of them were to me having lethal on board, my opponent being empty-handed, uh, draw for turn, Oko. Play it. I don't have a counter. Elk my shadow one time. Elk my Gurmag angler the other. And just run away with it because of Oko. And it happened twice. And it felt so bad. 
So bad. So now we're just causing that same sort of emotional despair to everybody else. Oh, is it? Now we're just out here like Oprah. Just you get a trauma and you get a trauma and you get a trauma. All right, so Oka is going back on top. And I kind of want to save the other brainstorm. Seems okay. We're just going to hit diamond in one stream like that, not losing a single game. That's crazy. <laughs> and so I think we did it on the first time we ran through historic too. We had a really sick run of just like cleaning house through uh through ranked historic. Uh yeah, we'll play a ledger shredder. See what they're gonna follow up with. It's just like mono black. All right, hit the land. It's shadow heart. That's kind of cool. Uh, let's put back Oko and shadow heart. Draw into the Oko. And thought sees. Oh, it's like mono black shadow. Okay. I mean, like mono black things that lose to Oko. That's exciting. Think Dark Ritual Castle Lockthway, an opponent you you are going places. That's so cool. That's so cool. Why is that so cool? Uh, how does opponent do every single time? It's just like, oh, opponent's doing something really awesome. And here we are casting Okos. Wait and build up my board a little bit. Oh, Master. Uh, gonna ping yourself. One ball, my Oko. Did get banned and everything. I agree. I agree. Like, I, I think it might be based on my limited experience in the format. I think this might be the best card in Timeless. Shocker, because it's the best card in, like, every other format as well. But my too early hot take, and not even that hot. This is, like, too early ice cold take. Oko, best card in Timeless. Oko ban. Is there an Oko ban in Vintage? I thought Luris was like the only thing. Or is it like restricted? Vintage. Restricted. 
No, oh, it goes legal, legal and vintage. They just don't play it. <laughs> uh, everyone I talk or talk to says Bowmaster is the best car in the format. All right, so I'm playing a Brainstorm Treasure Cruise low interaction deck, and I have not given a shit about Bowmaster yet. And maybe someone else has seen something different in our games, but I feel like Bowmaster just has not mattered ever. I'm really like waiting for them to find a third land and go for a um, activation on Lockthwain so I can just like Bowmaster in response to that wipe their board and leave them with like a shadow maybe two shadows maybe four shadows I don't know demonic tutor you go he's playing shadow with necropotence that's hot that's hot everything they do is hot everything we do is not Inquisition. <laughs> All right. The time has come to get in an attack. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it, OP. I get it. Oko equals stupido. So do we think they're playing uh, Necropotent? It makes sense, because if you're playing... Basic Swamps, Castle Lockthwain. The Necropotence kind of fits in with that plan. Sixty-one card special. I'm I'm not as cool as the Pioneer Racto Sacrifice players. They register fourteen card sideboards and 61 card main decks. They are too cool for my blood. Drop a counter spell on the draw. Like everybody else is out here playing Hunt Masters and Oni Cult Anvils and Judd. Was Jale what can you remember the name of the car now? Javriel Jarseal, that one. Playing all that stuff. They look like they're having fun. They're just bad people. See, Michael Kritz, I uh, want to say what's up. I was the red black sack player who played against your Boris Rope friend. Don't know if you saw my message earlier. I did not. Uh, now I got to scroll up and find it. I did not see it at all. I apologize for that. Please don't hate my guts. Uh, I can't scroll too far up, but hope you're having an awesome day. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming and hanging out. That was the uh, the game where nobody knew what was or no. Yeah, that was the game. Nobody knew what was going on with um, God's willing, right? <laughs> Blasphemous piece of cardboard. <laughs> OK, so for everybody hanging out, chat, TV land, whatever, uh, I had a, a buddy in the Pioneer 10K on Sunday, 
And I went over there to check out what he had going on. He's playing against Braxack. And he goes to cast a God's Willing on his main phase, like empty stack. And we realized that none of us knew if you had to name a color when the card was cast or when it resolved. And we're just like, what do we do? Just stop because, like, the guy I came to support is asking me. I'm telling him and his opponent, Michael, over here that I don't know what's going on. And I see two judges standing over on the side. So, like, I'm going to go ask them. And I go over there and I'm like, okay, we got a, a judge kind of question it's not really a call things aren't in horrible shape or something the world's not burning we're just not really sure what to do and the judge looks at me for a second like i'm an idiot like that's the whole purpose of judges is to help out when these situations are going on i was like all right you're right i'm i'm clearly clearly not uh not in the right frame of mind for magic whatever and judge comes over and turns out you don't have to name a color until it resolves. Didn't know. Cool to find out. So if you ever cast to God's willing and your opponent says, yo, you got to name a color. Uh, you can be like, whoa, that one judge at DreamHack Atlanta that one time said that I don't. And that's totally a credible answer. Nick those. It's mono black devotion with Nykthos. Mono black devotion with Nykthos. That's pretty dope, actually. Yet again, dope opponent, not dope control freak. We can get a Mystic Sanctuary to get back Drown. They're running Gary. I really hope not with Shadow, because doesn't Gary gain the life? Uh, MTG Gray Merchant of Asphodel. Yeah, you gain life equal. That seems like it'd be kind of rough. Uh, I'm going to play a shadow. I'm going to pass the turn because attacking with the scourge and them saying no blocks seems like bad for my health. Deathrite Shaman's pretty cool. Okay. Pass. Now, do I want Drown in the Lock or Counter Spell? Is that better than a random draw off the top of my library? Like, Counter Spell's got to be pretty decent here. Take action. Oh my god, counter spell. Uh, it's lightning helix. Now do I want to attack with the ledger shredder? So what does this look like? I attack with a ledger shredder. They fire up the hive and attack back. 3-3, three, three, exile something. If they attack back with everything but the Shaman. Let's say they take the 8, go to 4. These become 9-9s. Nine they attack back with everything except the Shaman, including the Hive. Block a Shadow on a Shadow is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15... Block shadow, block shadow. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Shadow still dies. So I kind of want to get to this Scourge being lethal. Or at least, like, Scourge being able to shut off Lockthwain. I'm a die to death rights. Hmm. All right. This is pretty cool, though. I can just make like one, two, three, four, five mana. The Lockthwain. Maybe. Mayhaps. Yep. All right. Two. And it does know about my counter spell. I have the ability to grow Scourge up to a 12 12 at instant speed. They are running Gary? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god, you did call it. <laughs> you absolutely did call it. Holy shit. <laughs> That's so great. Oh my god, that's so great. <laughs> They're running Gary. Hmm. Like unironically. They're running Gary. <laughs> uh, so it's just like every cheap black thing you can find and then Gary I'm starting I guess they still could be on Necropotence. Resolves. That wouldn't be the craziest assumption in the world. Yep. Mm-hmm. Reasonable chance we're just dead. I think my only real out is, like, finding a way to flip Shadow Heart. Marching my shadow heart.
there anything I can do if this resolves? No, I'm just dead on board, right? Let's think. They kill Shadow Heart. Fire up Hive. Attack all out. I'm dead on board. If they cast Grave Merchant, I counter spell and I might live. If I counterspell the Shadow Heart, uh, there's another Knife trigger, so I can't counterspell because I just die if I counterspell. Just straight up die. The double death right activation. Okay. Looks like we're going to have to go to game three. But we know what we're up against a little bit more now, so we can adjust. I guess we are just like dead on board to known information. But they don't know what I have, so maybe... How come no demonic tutor in this? You could. What are you replacing with it? Like, you really don't have uh, a ton of available mana to be able to tutor for stuff at will. So just activate these now so I, they know I can't fetch and have a kill spell. Like, Demonic Tutor is probably fine, but it's not like something that... Uh, something that I feel... It's like aggressively necessary. We got Stern's Goldings. We've got Fatal Pushes. Do we answer Necropotence? Well, I haven't seen Necropotence yet. I assume it's in their deck based off of the, uh, the rituals and the uh, the mono black, the Nykthos. But kind of like the last time we saw a Necropotence deck, I don't really want to go overkill on answering Necropotence and just lose to like the rest of the deck. Gonna go back to thought sees on the play. Trim ledger shredder. Uh, what's the artsy card in the board? Uh, bitter blossom. The old bitter blossom. I don't want bitter blossom here. Boomer card, indeed. <laughs> Does Oko do anything for your opponent since 
They're playing Shadow also? What do you mean? Like... Needle doesn't shut off Gary. It's a uh, ETB trigger, not an activated ability. I know I usually hate, like, bobble into hand disruption decks. That's decent. Go for it. What you want. I am shocked that they took anything other than Oko. That has to mean like a, um, a pithing needle or a shieldred's edict or something to that effect. Also, the first shock land that we've seen, or first fetch land. Hmm. Pass. We can Mystic Sanctuary back counter spell if we have to. Okay. I'll probably I was gonna say I'd probably drown a bowmaster here. They seem to be kind of lacking on black permanence. And ping them. I might just go ahead and play out my shadow. If they want to kill it, that's fine. I don't think I'm going to fight over a kill spell. Unless they go to their turn and like cast a bow master, I'd fight over that. Shadow's fine. Uh, I didn't even realize that's what it was doing with Nykthos, is it's like turning the color of stuff that you can cast. That's pretty dope. Or stuff that you can, like, tap mana for. Um, sure. And we'll just not show them this swamp yet. Our spell of shadow. Ah, uh, yeah.
I would really love to find like a treasure cruise. Kind of feel like I need a third one in the deck. Monic Tutor. Tutoring for another shadow, maybe? Tutor for a Bowmaster? Or a Lockthwain because you have a Bowmaster? That's a pretty good one. That's also a pretty good one. Um, am I just blowing up this shadow heart? Oh man, that's a that's a rough one. I think I am. Get your brainstorm to blew up a shadow heart. Ping ping, draw a card. Children's fine. They play that out. Then I get to crack a food, kill it. Uh, so I would like to stop on my upkeep. Sack of food. It'll push the children. Raw for turn. Fetch land is great because that's a Extra draw off Shadow Heart. Still undefeated. <laughs> oh, Shadow Heart. Shadow Heart, Shadow Heart, Shadow Heart. You are something else. Like staring at a card and thinking. Okay, is this worth just throwing away a brainstorm in a top deck war? Which we could have brainstormed and tried to like hit a blue card, have something live on top of our library, draw into it. But with knowing that they had a shieldred on top, I really like just playing out the uh, the shadow heart and like saying, all right, if your best play is shieldred. Then I'm going to do a bunch of, uh, oh, wait, hold up. Did we fuck up? I think we fucked up. We should not, we should not have flipped the shadow heart. Because if we didn't draw into exactly the fatal push, we were dead, right? Because Shadowheart just loops and kills us with children. Oh, I didn't even think about that. So, children would two ball us, which forces Shadowheart to draw us a card, which causes children to two ball us, which forces us to draw a card. So, we would have to rip into. A fatal push or like a drown in the lock off those draws to kill the children to stop the loop. That's so funny. So we should have just brainstormed and we got bailed out because we drew the fatal push right away. That is hilarious. <laughs> Timeless. They didn't see the loop. Well, I mean, it's a forced loop. 
there's nothing you can do about it because I'm going to draw a card for turn, which is going to trigger Shieldred, which is going to ping uh, me for two. There's no reason for them to turn it down, which forces me to draw a card. It's not a May. And it just keeps going. So I would have to draw a removal spell that I can cast in response to one of the triggers or it would just loop until I died. <laughs> oh, opponent's got shadow in their name. Clearly a player of culture. Yeah, I was very lucky to draw into the push. We should have uh, brainstormed on our turn and then decided on the Shadow Heart. Let's see. We've got... Lands, Shadow, Treasure, Cruise, but we have no interaction. Better. Just throw back Shadow Heart. Once upon a time... All right, if opponent's got like a turn two Oko, I can't do anything. If they have land Oko, I can't do anything with stub because of ley line. So I should just go ahead and thought seize. Like, they did keep a uh, hand off once upon a time. All right, find me a second land. Ooh, thank you, deck. Thank you, deck. You are so, so kind to me. Another watery grave. Fill off the goose. The goose that is no longer loose. Think they'll ever print some of these alchemy cards well some of the ones like shadow heart i don't think are feasible for paper play just because like you're now required to have not only shadow heart but like these five copies of things that go along with shadow heart and i don't think you can like reasonably make that happen it would be really cool but i don't see it being like being something they can realistically do. Because Shadow Heart's got a, uh, a funky second ability to it. When you specialize, it becomes that other card permanently. So it flips into like a three CMC creature. So for the sake of things like Luris is your companion, if it dies, you cannot replay Shadow Heart. Like if you specialize Shadow Heart on the board and it dies... You cannot replay it from the yard with Luris because it is now permanently that altered version in the graveyard. And I don't think you can keep up with that very effectively in paper. So despite me thinking it would be cool. What lands did we see? What did Foothills... Did they get a breeding pool? Or an overgrown tomb or something? If they got a breeding pool and I think Oko is like a realistic concern, then maybe I want to consider Mystical Dispute. If I don't think it's that big of a concern... 
then find other options. Actually gonna trim on an Oko here because Oko is not the greatest into decks that are like going wide. During the best of three ranks, has anyone made a ping deck? Uh, well, I saw like a Rakdos artifact deck that was using like Oni Cult Anvil. And so that was doing some pingings. Sage, what's up? Madman. Not I. Are you treasure cruising for a bruising? I'd like to see the make the two drop sorcery spell. Let's you look at the top three of your deck. Choose a card, put it in your hand, change that third to look at the top 10 or 15. So like two mana, look at the top 10 and put one in your hand. I feel like for most decks, that's just like a. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, a tutor at that point. Thoughtseize. I feel like Halfling is going to make this hand a lot worse. I do have Oko. Along with Veil of Summer. I don't like my chances here. I'm not going to lie. Uncounterable Oko or Bowmaster that just completely wrecks my brainstorm. But I'm going to do it because I'm trying to find a shadow or something impactful here, which we do not. We'll throw back something, something. Then Bowmaster is going to trigger a billion times. Yeah. All right, we'll go to game three. They do have Oko, Delighted Halfling, Bowmaster. Counterspell looking good again on the play. Stub a little bit less so. Oh, mystical dispute for Oko. Is it going to matter in the face of Delighted Halfling? I like bringing in the fourth drown against the Once Upon a Time Fetchland deck. Shadowheart. Bet you keep this hand too, fucking madman. Keep every hand I can keep. Snap keeping this hand. fact you're still playing drown lock in this type of format makes me, what would you play over drown and please tell me you're not one of these people that's like play memory lapse and everything memory lapse is busted memory lapse is so good why are you not playing memory lapse oh man does that argument get 
super old, super quick. Um, halfling off the top, and I don't have a good way of dealing with it. Unless I go Mystic Sanctuary first and hope that they... I could go Mystic Sanctuary if they fetch land or once upon a time into the halfling. All right, go. Why do I play memory lapse wild cards? Touche. Touche. But I've seen people just like aggressively uh, saying to play memory lapse over like counter spell or drown, not for wild card reasons, but because it's like the better option. And it drives me crazy. Like, you can put stuff back on top and Ragavan into it. I'm like, okay, that's cool if you're playing a Ragavan deck. What about everybody that's not? If we can bait out a Bowmaster. Not... Is it just me or mythic wild cards more common than rares? They are. Well, I think they're about the same. It's just a huge bottleneck because you don't use that many mythics. You use all the rares like immediately because you need them for uh, mana bases, especially that often need like 20 rare wild cards. Um you need them for just about every halfway chase card that gets printed. Was my prediction correct? 60% Oko so far? I think this is the first Oko deck that I've seen. Like, all day. I don't believe I have witnessed another... Now, if you ask me how many games we have won with Oko, an astronomical amount. <laughs> Oko has so easily stolen just an incredible amount of games. I'm going to take a Minx Gimbu. Here's a shadow. Go. That is a relic of progenitus. Go for it. Gilded it in it, goose. Mm.
I'll just hit for three. Go. Resolve. What on earth is this? Uh, when it enters the battlefield, pay green up to three times. When you pay this cost one or more times, choose up to that many. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Sure. Exile target player's graveyard. Sure, you gain four life. So then gain 12 life here. That is... That's a thing. Resolve. Oh, you can only do it once? No, it says you can pay it up to three times. Like, why... Why no pay more? Why no want more? In me. I love that. Like, are you sure you want to target yourself with this ability? Quite. Quite positive. I guess they forgot they could make a food in response there. Nope. I, uh, go. Fatal push. Got deal. We continue. Uh, I used to hate the goose, but I realized it wasn't the goose, but the cat that I hated. I hated the goose into Oko play pattern. I never really hated the goose. I really wanted to play. There was a blue green like uh, goose Oko artifact deck uh, that was running through the SCG tour for a bit. And honestly, like every. No, I guess um, there's no Mox Opal on Arena, but the deck just used like Gilded Goose, Mishra's Bobble, Mox Opal, uh, Emery, Oko, Urza, Mystic Sanctuary, like Cryptic Command and stuff, and like ridiculous amounts of trying to outvalue your opponents with that stuff. And it always looked so sweet, and I never played it. I just, like, played against it all the time. SCG still stream or no? They don't. They haven't even run events in I don't know how long. They say every day on Arena and stop me from playing for, like, a year. I believe that. I 100% believe that. Like, I had a pretty good win rate against the deck for s somehow. I could not begin to express how I had a good win rate against it, but did. And uh, so whenever I'd see it in, like, SCG events, I did fairly well. Save my golden wild cards for a Horizon event. I have no idea what event that would be. I do not keep up with, like, any of the arena news, so. Sounds good, I think. Also, DMK, thank you for the follow. Uh, hand looks great. Unless they play, like, a turn one... What? Toxic one. When crawling chorus dies, create a one one colorless Phyrexian might artifact creature token with toxic one and this creature can't block. Sure. Also sure.
Crawling chorus. Are they gonna do this into like a the enchantment? Not what I had in mind. Uh, I was gonna say the enchantment that like makes a one one every turn. Scrolls hide. Yeah, that one. That's what I thought the follow up was gonna be. Clearly, I was incorrect. Uh, here's a swamp. Go. I'm going to assume, and maybe I'm incorrect, that this is like somebody's uh, pre-con deck or something. In which case, I am impressed as absolute shit that they are playing like diamond or platinum two or platinum one or whatever uh rocking it that is awesome grove hive grove hive come on do it can't block i can Uh, this is an elk. Ah. Do elk things. Three copies of Stroke of Midnight. Destroy target non-land permanent. Its controller makes a human. Mondrak, Glory Dominus. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, twice that many of those tokens are created instead. So you're like killing your own stuff and making tokens. Opponent's playing standard legal cards and timeless, and I respect them for it. I absolutely respect them for it. Uh, I truly miss saying that's a 3 3 and anything opponent slams on the board. Okay, so I played against somebody at one of these SCG events. And he played out an Oko, like, elked my shadow, and broke out one of those hard plastic, uh, it was like a, a hard plastic cover about the size of a card, clear plastic, and just had, like, these uh, little intricate woven vine designs around the border, and then, like, in the bottom corner, it just said three slash three, and it had a line across the middle that said creature elk. And you just set it on top of your creature so you could like see it through there. But it was dope. <laughs> it was really dope. I'll see if I can find one. Uh, MTG Oko uh, elk card cover. I don't know sideboard before I forget. I don't really know what they're doing. Noxious Grasp seems okay. Legion's End stops the death trigger. Uh, can board out a Shadow Heart. Maybe a Scourge because it didn't look like they had a very painful mana base. Done. Clear card cover. All right. So it was like this, like a clear cover that goes over the card. But instead of looking like 
this kind of looks like a card was cut out. Uh, there was no flavor text. That box was clear. And it just had, like I said, an intricate, like, vine-looking design wrapping around where the border was. And it was like a thick plastic cover. I was like, that's, that's pretty sweet. That's really cool. I appreciated it. And so you just like set it over the creature that got elked. I mean, he had like a dozen of them. They're very much prepared to elk everything in the entire room. Second land is good. Even if it's a swamp. Um, Shredder, sure. Yep. I investigate. Are they gonna like blow up my clue token? <laughs> Touche, opponent. Touche. All right, so that's breeding pool for Oko. Throwback, push, shredder, something, submit. Uh, oh. <laughs> Blow my dude up, investigate. All right, uh, enter the battlefield, create a white gnome token. Power and toughness is equal to the number of artifacts and or creatures you control. Beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you may tap five untapped artifacts and or creatures you control. If you do, transform it. I cannot counterspell that. I can, however, fatal push it. I think we're going to do that. Fetch away. Okay. I could just elk this thing. I feel like I'm getting greedy and I'm going to get punished. Okay. EBD. Seven cards in the yard. That's a that's a convenient amount of things in my graveyard. Shame if someone. Treasure cruised. Okay. Uh, I don't really need Shadow Heart right now, so we'll just pass. That's fine. Less fine. Uh, if damage would be dealt to Fire X Vindicator, prevent that damage. When damage is prevented this way, it deals that much damage to any target. Thankfully... Our cards don't really say deal damage very much or like at all. Um, we're we're the anti damage dealers of the magic world. Bowmaster. Oop. OK, opponent's over it. I understand. I understand opponent. I get it. Sorry that I'm the fun police. Out here elking stuff. To be fair, they did answer the Oko immediately. So we were out here just like trying to have fun, and they're like, oh, kill your Oko, make a human. Also, that four white vindicator is like 
probably hard carried a lot in a world full of um like what's it called dragon's rage channeler decks is that the one i'm thinking of Maybe that's not the one I'm thinking of. Isn't there one that's like pro red or something? Hey, you unholy heat it and take six. Half Urza, half biscuit. Fluffy. Just about to say, there's so many tools that it's quite surprising that burn isn't common. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I have to go back through and look at like what exactly there is. But I mean, I know that cards like Lightning Bolt and Monastery Swift Spear are in the format. Got Bowmaster. Bowmaster. Master of the Bows. We get thought seized here. Probably brainstorm some stuff. Oh, play burn, splash treasure cruise like the old days. <laughs> like Richard Garfield intended. This is another Necropotence deck. All right. Well, I don't think we're winning game one. Not to resolve Necropotence. I mean, I guess there's a chance if we like top deck a shadow or something. But at least we've got the thought seize, so like we'll know if we're up against a dedicated um, Necropotence deck. Want either of these? Mono, the one myth drop two two that bounces back. Uh, you're either thinking of Zergo Bell Striker, or there's like a one mana two two that returned a land to your hand. Um, what was it from like Icoria or something? Ragavan, Blood Moon, Dark Ritual, Lyelia. <laughs> These decks look so awful if you don't resolve a Dark Ritual. Maybe I'm like being a little over the top about it, but I don't know. It just seems like even with Necropotence, like not saving you with a lot of these hands. I 
also, I might want to think about cutting. Well, I don't think I want to cut drowns. Like, they're still really good if they don't have necropotents. But necropotents exiling everything that goes to the yard is kind of rough. Did Scourge do anything? Oh, yeah. See, I don't think you're being over the top from all the timeless content I've seen. It looks like people are playing bad CEDH decks to play four of them or 60 cards. Probably. <laughs> I, I've seen a lot of things uh, that look like ideas that people took from EDH. But then we see, all right, this is Necropotence with cards I can cast. And I'm just going to hope to like refill every turn. At least that's what it looks like to me. Most of the stuff just looks like good stuff. So when the first day that I was playing, it seemed like every deck I played against was Darcy, Ragavan, Brainstorm, Treasure Cruise, uh, Counterspell, Expressive Iteration, just like that exact same shell. And maybe there'd be one or two cards different. Like I'd see one that was just straight blue, red, one that was Teamer with like, uh, Oko and Minx Gimbu, and then one that was uh, a little more graveyard centric with Uro, and that was like it. There's no way they're missing on lands this badly, is there? You're just like, oh, you're just going to march for a billion. <laughs> OK, fair enough. Guess that helps out the plan a little bit. Um, so Bowmaster looking a little less exciting now. I could fatal push brainstorm. Probably like my best line is just fatal push this, brainstorm, try to find land. Well, technically. All right, I'll we'll just go to game two. Okay. Spell pierce, better against the unfair part. Heading Needle against Necropotence. And then how aggressively do I want to fight the rest of the deck? I could just do like that. Board out some Bowmasters because I think all it's doing is killing opposing Bowmasters. Or I could keep Shadow Heart or board out a Shadow Heart. Keep the third Bowmaster. I need to interact with Ragavan, maybe Deathrite Shaman. Ah, uh, but I do kind of want the Drowns. All right, submit. They usually only play Ragavan, Lailia, Deathrite, Shaman, Bowmasters, sometimes Mandek, Luris. 
I think it's like just the exact same kind of as the list I played against earlier. All right. They also have decks set to burn through my quest, play historic. But if I get the land quest, I play my land brawl deck. By turn three, I have five lands. That sounds pretty dope. Just slinging lands like nobody's business. Chalice of the Void on one. No, thank you. Um... Is it worth Oko-ing into Necropotence? I think I'm going to. I think Oko too good to not do. They drop a Necropotence here, obviously pretty good on their side, but we do just have like an Oko taking up, sure. I'm going to make make this into an elk. Wait and see. Didn't have any fetch lands, so I couldn't have fetched around Blood Moon. I could have just held up Spell Pierce and Counterspell. Maybe that was better. It was just hold up the Spell Pierce and Counterspell and like plan on interacting with whatever they did on their turn. I think I'm attacking an Elking Pithing Needle. Necro... Done. I say, all right, if you're going to spend all your resources attacking at Oko. Not really spending all your resources, just Lyelia. Man, I hate to get done in by a Blood Moon. Especially when, like, we had the answers to the moon. Best draw would be... Basic swamp, so we could make a food, crack the food, fatal push the Lyelia. Mm-hmm. Sure. Is totally acceptable. Basic Swamp and Basic Island in one Ashiok Mill. Gross. Gross. That is so nasty. All 
I don't care about your Ashiok. <clears throat> Ashiok, pretty nice inclusion for sure, given all the fetches. Yes, we sat here with a hand with no fetches in our opener and got blood mooned. <laughs> But like I said, we got a we played into it pretty badly. I could have just not played the Oko and held up spell pierce and counter spell. That would have answered Lyalia, would have answered Blood Moon. Uh that being said, if we didn't follow up with a land, we would have been in trouble. All right, I think that uh, that does it for the home team. First loss of the day, <laughs> black, red, dark ritual, necropotence. So what happened that game? Game one, turn one, ritual necropotence. Uh, were they on the play or the draw? I think they were on the they were on the draw. We didn't have a thought seize. We drew into the thought seize on their turn off the bobble. We didn't see anything off of our bobble that gave it away. Game two was the tap out turn for uh for Oko. Which we could have chosen not to tap out. Obviously in hindsight would have been the better play. I just did not have Blood Moon on my mind. I keep forgetting that's even in this format. So that's on me. Hands great. MH3's got me scared. Why do uh why are you scared of MH3? I think it's just gonna be a bunch of broken stuff. More pitch elementals, more hogax, more renin sixes. Death right shaman. You're not an answer to death right shaman. Not answers to death right shaman either. Out here just giving this thing free fuel. Juggernaut Peddler. When Juggernaut Peddler enters the battlefield, target player reveals all non-land cards in their hand. You may choose one of those cards. If you do... That player exiles it and conjures a card named Juggernaut Peddler. No. Shadow Heart. Not going to give you my fetch land if I can avoid it. We 
now have red and white mana. Giver, pretty good. Pretty good. Also pretty good. Are we still undefeated? No, we lost last round to a Dark Ritual Necropotence deck. Hurt my soul. All right. Tony wants to learn the hard way about Shadow Heart. Well, opponent, you, uh, you gonna learn today. Activate ability of Shadow Heart. I could just make this black and like I will not lose to a death right shaman. I don't hate that. If I go blue, yeah, I think I'm going black with this. It's just shadow. Whenever an opponent searches their library, you gain one life and draw a card. Let's get a reading pool. Sure. Resolve Shadow Heart. Go to combat. Hiya. So the Shadow Heart's black side flips into a 4 4 death touch with life flank. Beginning of your end step, he pings both players. So we end up netting one positive life. Then pings us both. We gain one off each of those. Or. Um, I just want to, I think I just want to search at Bowmaster in response to this. I could try to Mystic Sanctuary back something just to tap them out. I don't hate that. So let's go... No, I can't Mystic Sanctuary with uh, a land currently available to me. So we'll Bowmaster. Library again, life draw a card. Kill off the Shaman. They want to like use their mana to Make me lose to sure. Archon is down. And now we have ourselves a good old fashioned race. We no longer have ourselves a good old fashioned race. The race is over. It's been decided. We we won it. I uh we're going to gain some life and ping you. Shadow Heart. 
Let's see, maybe they'll reprint dual lands. Yeah, they literally can't. Legally, they can't. I don't even think they can make like functional reprints of the dual lands. It'd be cool if they could, but don't see that one happening. They could put them in this format. They could. Do you need it? Who's going to take to court? The people that have got tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars invested in reserve list stuff. You have Tropical Island if you play Merfolk on MTGA. That's fair. That's fair. The answer is right in front of us this whole time. We were just too blind to see it. I love Shadow Heart against these, like, kind of aggro creature decks because it just outgrows everything on the other side of the board. And it's great. Kind of like does hand beat turn one death right shaman. If yes, hand great. If no, and need work. Veil of Summer. No Veil of Summer. Okay, so ETB reveals all non-land cards. You choose one of those cards. If you do, that player exiles a card. They get a jug. Or they get oh they get a juggernaut, not a juggernaut peddler. Just take one of these peddlers. Oh, he's got like a juggernaut he's working on in the back there. That's kind of funny. Kind of cool. Yep. Take a look. What you want? Uh, what they take? Bowmaster, sure. Do I want to just go ahead and fire off brainstorm? Probably should. Oof. Oof. I was going to say, opponent, you, you better main phase this Bowmaster. We're going to die to some Sakinzin tokens. So crushing the timeless, Mike's having fun. It it's a pretty fun format. No argument. Oromir. Never an opponent casts a spell. If no man is meant to cast it, counter it. Sack it. Creatures get indestructible. The ring tempts you. I would like to kill that. I guess I should have noxious grasped it to gain the life. Bowmaster. Not a bowmaster. Um, that one. Ooh. 
Oof. Oof, oof, oof. Big oof. Yeah, we'll just go to game three. He lands. I think the, the sideboard plan is fine. I could probably like cut the other thought seizes for just more interaction. I'd be happy with that. And off topic news, the YouTube mom that is in court for child abuse has pled guilty. Fair enough. Uh, probably a good thing. Oof, thank you so much for the gifted sub to Bits. Greatly appreciated, Bits. Welcome to the subscribers. Enjoy access to all of our sweet custom Death Shadow emotes. We are totally dropping in chat now. Ha! Ah. Thank you, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I would love to play first. I would love to not keep this hand. Goodbye forever, Shadowheart. As much as I like Stern Scolding, I think we're going to get rid of it. Should I just like brainstorm now in case I get locked? I can go ahead and get the cards out of the way. I guess it sees the same amount, so it doesn't like really matter. Giver of runes. Bro. Got to talk about these. Uh, talk about these drawing mystic sanctuary. Way ahead of curved hands. Okay. Here's the shadow heart. Holding up drown doesn't really do anything for me. All of real life games that go into game third game to break a tiebreaker. When it comes to best of three tiebreaker, I don't care if I lose. I mean, I care. <laughs> I don't want to go to game three. I want to beat you in two. Winota. Okay, I I would not have guessed at any point during any of this that this was a Winota deck. Fair enough. I did not see that coming. Hey, look, the land. Well, we could go out on our own terms. Okay. <laughs> Didn't expect that. Did not expect that at all. That's kind of cool. Right. 
Brainstorm needs Ponder to be super good. It's still pretty good without Ponder. As long as you got fetch lands. Now it'd be better if I could play like 12 on color fetch lands instead of doing what I'm doing, which is just like eight on color fetch lands or eight blue fetch lands. Got a Mishra's Bobble. What you want to do with it? Get my library. Kind of rude. My library ever do to you? This mean Bowmaster? All right, we'll play it. No creature to exile currently to gain life, so they'd have to kill this to gain the life anyway. Yep. What you want? Want brainstorm? Counter spell. Land in the yard anywhere. No. Storm. Here is a shadow heart. Gonna ping everybody. That's what he do. How he be. Three cards in the yard. Still a little ways off of treasure cruise, but if opponent's not doing anything, that kind of helps. Ah, yeah. Treasure Cruise Natural Order. One of those I am exponentially more scared of. I think we're just going to main phase the treasure cruise. Yeah, yeah. And I am not going to be cracking this fetch. I can tell you that with mostly absolute certainty. Till next turn. I'll crack it next turn. At that point, we've got Shadow Heart and cares about a fetch land.
We shadow hearten, baby. And go. Ping ping. Ping ping, draw a card. Draw a card. Ah, they found the fetch. Think they're gonna go for the natural order? Or you think they're gonna do something crazy like something else? I guess if they have, like, Natural Order plus Spell Pierce or something, they can get me. Yeah, Shadow Heart. <laughs> Wonder what modern will look like when we can finally cast Sephiroth. It's pretty hot. Pretty hot. All right. Um, natural order into something. Natural order into something. Natural order into something. Obviously, I don't like love drown, but I need to be able to interact with death, right? Don't get blocked by Optimus Prime. <laughs> a lot of decks natural order into World's Prime Worm because not a lot of white exile removal. Uh, so they just like can guarantee they're going to get the uh, uh, tokens. Realistically, Sephiroth will get countered by the Infinity Stones. Ah, uh, is magic great? Halfling. All right, well, I can't get Brainstorm locked if I've got a fetch land. Allegedly. Veil of Summer. No Veil of Summer. Double Natural Order, Fatal Push, Hornet Queen. MF Hornet Queen. Oh my god. <laughs> Hornet Queen. Oh, I'm so dead if that ever hits the it's the battlefield. <laughs> OP is indeed a gangster. Look at this. Show me a bowmaster in response. Mm -hmm. 
What you got? You gonna fatal push my bow, man? I'm not sure I can do it for anyone else, Mike, but this format does look fun. Like, Steven was in here earlier and can attest. There are just, like, some sweet-looking things going on in the format. All right. We get to kind of unbrainstorm lock ourselves. Kind of. Yep. Ah. I love this prompt of like, are you sure you want to, you want to shoot yourself? Is that the best use of your mana? And you're like, I don't give a sh Ah, if it's the best use. Doing it. Delve seven. These hits are on fire. These hits are on fire. I'm not dying to that. At least not yet. Later. Pay to life. Play a shadow. Play a shadow. Go. Conan, I would like to introduce you to the magic card Stubborn Denial. For one, one singular blue mana you can counter a non-creature spell unless its owner pays one but if you have ferocious power with four creature with power four or greater get it out of here did i have fun this match i did have fun that match <laughs> i had a bit of fun are you still cruising undefeated no we lost two matches we are uh as soon as we get back we passed over 15 matches. I think we've played like 18-ish mat. No, probably like 20 matches. Because uh, we got all of the XP things all the way up. And you got to get like wins to play or to get that up. That's 15. So we got at least 15 plus a couple more. So I think we're like 17 and two or something like that. 18 and two somewhere. Uh, our two losses were to a Necropotence deck. The turn one Black Ritual Necropotence says game one. And then game two uh, Blood Moon got us. Um, I tapped out for an Oko when I had like Spell Pierce and Counterspell and put it untapped and played a Blood Moon into Lyelia. And then the other loss was a Mardu deck that game one, we saw like dude that takes something out of your hand and gives you a juggernaut. We won game two. We got mana screwed. And then game three, we got mana screwed into our opponent showing that they had Winota, which I did not know game one or game two. So kind of wrecked by that. If anybody's curious, this is the deck that I was uh, I've been running. It's basically Demir Shadow, with the exception of Oko Thief of Crowns, which if you haven't gotten to watch much of the stream today, bust it. Just like pulled us out of some positions that we had no business having a fighting chance in, and made it look easy. Uh, plus so many games just like slamming it on an open board, but Oko just a normal card, right? Just, just a normal ab filled fey thing, whatever it is. Um, so many games that Oko just single handedly soloed. Really, really cool. You, you could definitely build the deck as just like a non shadow shell. And cut the shadows, cut the thought seizes, cut like scourge, shadow heart stub, and run more good cards and be completely fine. 
But Shadow's carried its weight as well. Shadow, uh, Shadow Heart have both been really good. Shadow Heart soloed one of the aggressive matchups, flipping into um, into the black side, surprisingly. And play a non-shadow deck on stream ain't no way. Uh, we played like a non-shadow deck in the last week. I think. Maybe. Could be wrong. But I believe I'm going to I'm going to call it there. It was really, really hot run, but I've got to get some food. I'm going to send everybody over to Kevin KO Diamond. So if you want to check out some Pioneer Black Green Rock, which I will say I was in Atlanta this past weekend. Pioneer was more fun than I thought it was going to be. So I am going to try to do some extra like Pioneer content videos, but I have been having an absolute blast with Timeless. So if you haven't checked it out, we'll have the VOD of all today's videos up. I'm going to just like post the VOD straight to YouTube. Timeless has been so much fun. Uh, give it a shot. Otherwise, I will uh, catch everybody back later. Y'all all go enjoy some good food and company. Take it easy. And yeah, if you got any questions, dropping a couple links in chat. Twitter gets updated when we go live. Discord, if you want to come talk about this deck and all the other timeless stuff going on. And uh, YouTube, if you want to see the full video as well as any of the other leagues we've had of like Shadow recently. So everybody take it easy. Catch y'all back live later. Adios for now.